one, clap. Welcome to the Afro Tackle Podcast, episode 43, the podcast where we talk about anime, manga, and everything else. I'm Mr. Good Guy, a.k.a. MGG, and I'm joined here by my co-host who will introduce himself starting right now. Hey, it's Player 5. What's going on? It's Jugga. What's good? It's Deuce. <laughs> this is like, like part of your intro now, bro. bro did, I, did you guys hear the moan or was it just me? No, I heard that too. Oh, okay. All right, then. Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> See how it's cracking during the podcast. I'm just... <laughs> so all the decent news. Um, a whole bunch of first episodes dropped, I guess, this month. Uh, the new season of Fire has finally begun. Uh, we got Yashihime, uh, the Inuyasha sequel, Burn the Witch, Jujutsu Kaisen, God of High School just ended, and a whole bunch of other anime. So we could just toss out our impressions uh, for the ones we might have watched or might not have watched. Uh, I can kick it off with uh, last night I watched Burn the Witch, caught up to all three episodes. Um, all I can say is obviously it's not going to replace Bleach. But Taite Kubo does what he does best, which is being able to create uh, interesting power systems. I'm not going to say complex, but I will say interesting. Because um, I I think that it was... Um, uh, the shit with the witches was pretty cool. The dragon aspect of it was very interesting. Those The first episode was very dry. I couldn't even read the... I tried reading the limited series, but it was so dry. It was hard to get through. The anime definitely helped me catch up or want to catch up um the the action was dope you can see they really put some budget in there um i i liked it but once again i'm coming in with my heart protected because i i read bleach watch bleach um so i'm not gonna put all a whole bunch of hype on it but i will say if you just go in watching it for the action i think you will enjoy those first three episodes um next uh, I did watch the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, I thought that was dope as well. Um, I definitely see them going some interesting places with the animation and action. It looks like, I don't know about this, about you guys, but this winter season looks like they just kind of leveled up the touch of the animation just a little bit. I don't know if yeah, some new production. technology just got rolled out. But in both of those two series, I was definitely seeing like a strong strong animation touch up. Like they, It looked beautiful. I enjoyed watching both of those just off the the beauty, not even paying attention to the content. So um, definitely think those started off strong. The end of God of High School, once again, if it wasn't for the people I know that read God of High School, I think I would leave this series a little bit more disappointed because the pacing is horrible. It is yeah. super fast for 13 episodes. The only reason why I enjoyed it was the action right. um, and the fact that I like talked to people who explained the plot holes to me. But I think if I came in, just trying to watch it off bat, I would not have enjoyed that season outside of the action. It could definitely easily be a demon slayer in terms of selling the the hype of the action because uh, the story doesn't really have it there, bro. It, the pacing's all off. Oh. Those are mine. Um, pretty much, I watched uh, like the first episodes of All As You. Minus, I've only got through uh, the first episode of Burn the Witch at the moment. Um, Yasha, uh, Yasha Hime, I will definitely give them big ups. I was I was surprised by how they did it, but looking back at it, it was actually really smart as far as making an F one kind of like an Inuyasha recap. For the end of the series at first i was like really like is this really necessary mm -hmm. at the same time if you think about you know like all the hype like any ash is on and like the reason the show started it was probably like a really good idea to do so because as far as like the reviews everybody's like loving just seeing inuyasha and kagome again etc so wow. i was just like am okay i guess leave just it off with the did they leave it off with we ain't find that nigga or <laughs> as far as naraku no i mean yeah. it was like, this episode was literally just supposed to hit your nostalgia to pretty much get you going and hype for the rest of the show slash ep2. And like, I guess kind of, like, give um the basic intros as far as, to like, who all the kids are and who are the parents, at least for some characters. Wow. So how uh, is the Inuyasha Kagome, like, I guess they were kind of adults, but, like, I guess parental aesthetics. Is that good to see? 
Did any of y'all should look? Well, I mean, like, technically, they didn't get into that yet. All we were really introduced to is the daughter, but they didn't really show the parent aspect of Inuyasha and Kagome specifically. It was more uh, Moroko, um, Miroko, and uh, Sango that we really got to uh, get that highlight. But it's pretty Mm -hmm. much like that second to last step, I guess, that you would kind of see um, right before the whole, you know, series is over, quote unquote, scene. All the children are with all the parents, how they're interacting. It's pretty uh, much like the episode right before that episode is what episode one of Yasuhime was. But okay. I mean, the mere fact of like seeing the old characters again, I mean, like from what I was seeing and reading from the anime community, like, like people are hyped, you know, just from seeing them again. And I will say one thing which reminded me, I guess, I didn't like finish every single episode of the Inuyasha series, but. The move he used with Ted Saiga at the end of that episode was redonkulous. Did you like did you watch this first up, right? Like, did you know I that he had it. that ability? I did not watch it yet, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh snap. I mean, like you 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 you'll know what I'm talking about. But homie uses okay. a move that was just like the scale of the move is like it shouldn't even be in Inuyasha. Like it's way too OP. Like I didn't even know like the Ted Saiga could do that. It's kind of redonkulous. But anyways, well, I guess we'll talk about that later if we do any future. Well, we all know Inuyasha was trash with the damn sword anyways, low-key. I mean, like, that's the thing, though. Like, that's kind of what I thought. But at the same time, this move alone is good enough where you don't need nothing else. So like, Inuyasha used this move. or someone else used this? Wait, say again? Inuyasha used this move or someone else did? No, Inuyasha used this move with Ted oh, Saika wow. almost like it was the final move of the series of Inuyasha. But I don't remember even hearing anything like this. So yeah. I'm not sure if it was just um, not not necessarily a teaser, but just to be like, you know what, let's just give this mother effer a dope move just to do it. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, like, bro, like, once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's it's like honestly ridiculous. It was way too easy to use, and the effects are like pretty much one hit kill, no matter who you are. And then that's like mm-hmm. with Naraku with that too. Just gonna throw yeah, that. Did get busted. Say again. I said Inuyasha did get kind of busted towards the end. I mean, I guess so. I must have like either one not seen it or just like forgot. But like this move, like it just it opened my eyes. Like holy crap! Um, but anyways, uh, like the actual animation and production of the series does look decent. Um, again, I mean, like I kind of mentioned before, I do like the um, uh, the three women leads. You know, they're all daughters of the main characters, and it will be interesting to see um, how they progress through the series. So, I mean, I'm still hyped for it. Um, a decent episode one. Still, in my opinion, a little bit more recap than what was necessary, but it did hit the nostalgia pretty good. So, oh well. Um, as far as Burn the Witch goes, I did not read it, but from Ep One, like MGG said, the production of the animation looks mighty legit, um, and I definitely see what he's talking about as far as the um, the power structure go. Like their main weapon, uh, I guess you could say, um, was uh, definitely very interesting and kind of like. Uh, I guess I'll call it simplistic. I, w- I won't necessarily call it goofy, but it was definitely interesting to see that's like a, almost like um, a stereotypical like laser that you would see in like a, like an 80s space movie kind of thing. And I was yeah. like, oh, that was a, that's definitely an interesting touch the- on like a common weapon these days. But Yeah. When I was talking about the powers, though, I was referring more to, uh, you probably haven't seen it yet because it's just like the first few episodes, but there's a... At the end of the first episode, they introduce all those, like, I will just call them the round table. Yeah, Yeah, but those guys, uh, basically what it seems like from the way the story is being told is the two girls are basically like, I guess, what you would call like the lowest rung. If we just to equivalent it to Bleach, they're like soul reapers that haven't even found a squad yet. So they have to apply to a squad. And one of those motherfuckers, like all of those captains run a squad. And basically, those captain heads add another layer to the power structure, which I'll just avoid uh-huh. spoiling because you won't watch it in the third episode. Okay. But that part is like, oh, shit, I didn't know that. And then it seems like there's also different ways that they cast their magic. So it seems like the gr- the gun thing might just be associated to either weaker mages or just those two people. Uh, because one of the captains has like he, he casts his magic with like spray bottles. He like pulls out escape spray <laughs> can and like like writes out an incantation and and summons shit. So it seems like there's also variations in the types of magic people specialize in. Which I mean I appreciate because I feel like you know he might be picking up the slack of what he left in um 
Bleach. Bleach with the whole magic user corpse and all this other stuff. He opened that whole box of can of worms and never, you I know, see. Went, you know, but, but okay. yeah. That's so, decent. I mean, especially considering this is the only like the tip of the iceberg, then yeah, it's only going to get better from here, then I would imagine. Um, so I'm still like, I'm pretty much vested now in Burn the Witch 2. On um, Jujutsu Kaisen, as I already like predicted, with uh, if y'all been uh, keeping up with us for the manga chapter reviews, um, episode one did not disappoint, it kept the hype going as I knew it was gonna happen. Um, the animation is good, kind of like that darkness that it was, uh, uh, that the Jujutsu Kaisen um, touch on certain topics as well. So I'm glad that influence is there, and then also just from the clips and trailers I've seen for like the rest of the season. Season, the fight scenes are going to be dope. So, like, definitely a good F1 start. Um, got a high school. Oh, was... wait, real quick on Jujutsu Kaisen. I forgot to call this out. But one other thing I want to call out is for the first time in a while, I've seen an opening that doesn't spoil shit. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen's opening. It introduced a lot of, it'll show you a lot of characters. But for the first time in a while, it doesn't fucking spoil hella shit. Like mm -hmm. Black Clover openings too, <laughs> or all these other stuff. I felt like I was like, oh, these are all characters that you're gonna see. But from watching the opening, I wasn't like, oh damn, they showed you that person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Black Clover, spoiler free. Which I, whole... I got to clap for them on that, huh? I said Black Clover tell you the whole damn show. That's a fact. I'd be like, <laughs> they not even see this nigga exists yet. Bro. It, 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 it'd be like, don't knock <laughs> exist, don't they? <laughs> right, bro. It'd be like at the beginning. Like season one, like they showing fucking Zagrid and Lumiere and shit. Like, <laughs> they don't give a fuck at all. Yeah. I didn't even, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't even like remember it. I was just thinking about the actual episode itself, but okay, that's legit. Just another plus for it. Um, for God of High School, pacing was ridiculous. Um, I am not caught up in the manga, but I did like start it to a decent extent and like comparing, I'm comparing as far as like the actual storyline and how that was going compared to like what they skipped in the anime. The best description I could go into the anime right now would simply be the whole series that they made it was pretty much just a series trailer. Like right. they, they didn't Let's give go. a f about the, they didn't give a f about the story. It was all about the fight scenes, and it only really touched as far as like the true explanation on the power structure goes. But I mean, like the I mean, the fight scenes were dope. So I mean, I would literally just describe the anime as just a um, fighting clip compilation, or just a trailer of the series as a whole. I mean, that uh, AMV, sure. <laughs> like literally. Cause I mean, like so it, it wasn't was, good then. Huh? I mean, it was. It, it was, was though. Like, the action was fire, bro. Right. Like if you went into the. Would you series, say like they're not following the story of the manga? It, they it are, but the like, pacing is so bad. Like imagine if you watched Naruto and then they were just at the tuning exams, and then after they started the tuning exams, they just skipped to the Sasuke retrieval arc. Like you didn't even see them. Like they just showed you all the major fights in the tuning exams. But no backstory to what the power structure is, why the tuning exams exist. They were just like, hey, by the way, like, go take these exams. And they're like, why are we taking these exams? You Nigga, that's on trash to me. I know, but the thing is, the action is so good. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it keeps you watching each episode because the action is that decent. Like, they put a lot of money into the fight scenes that you're just like, yo, what the fuck is going on? But I don't know. And like I said, if you're going fresh, it sucks, but for me, like I said, my little brother filled in the gaps because he reads the manga. So he was like, "Wait, they skipped this." So he pretty much filled in the gaps for me. Don't you? So read, I didn't, don't you read it? Bother me as much, huh? Don't you read the manga too? No, I don't. I'm about yeah. to start though, but it, he he filled in the gaps for me. So in other words, you need to read it before you watch the anime, pretty much. Oh, uh, you want to understand it without a doubt. Yeah. Um. What I will say, what you gonna call it, is that yeah, I mean, like the the whole the reason why I guess it's so disappointing is that I was thinking that God of High School was gonna get as much hype as like Tower of God, you know, like it has the actual potential to be that next. I mean, I wouldn't say big three necessarily, but considering it's like um a Korean show, I guess you can call it like the Korean big three. If you oh, will. real quick, real quick. So just now, MDG, you were talking about God of High School, or? Yeah, just now with no, the no, no, tuning exam example, that was God of High School I was talking about. 
Oh, oh, that's just decent. I know what you're talking about, Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, I, I, no. watch, I, re- I watch God High School. That's just decent. Never mind. See? <laughs> <laughs> but you, do you read it too, or you just watch it? No, I just watch it. See? Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. But there's a lot of plot holes, though, right? Like, oh, I, don't, yeah, they... I, I definitely don't understand the powers. It is, exactly. It that's what I just watch it to watch it. Introduce the fucking powers. But right. it's dope. <laughs> And it's like if they took some more time with it, they could like progress it and actually talk about the things that they skipped over a lot. But considering like where episodes, they are right sure. now, it's like it's just it's just so I guess a little sad. Like there's, I mean, I could honestly see them not even like giving God a high school a second season based on how season one was made, if that makes sense. And that would definitely be very sad. So yeah, I think it's getting it because I think the action carried it. But like I said, 23 episodes would have been good because my thing is I hate that it was 13 episodes, yet they still found a way to fit in. I'm right. sure it's not technically filler, but it's a filler episode like the the whole marriage thing with um the Lu Bu chick like her. That thing with the inheriting the source, that was a total. Think, I mean, like episode. it gave, I definitely gave a filler feel. I'll feel you there. But yeah. from what I read, I don't I don't think it is. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I know it's canon in the manga, but what I'm saying is it's still a fucking... Like, if you're pacing the show and cutting shit out, cut that shit out. Like, it didn't add anything to the... You know what I'm oh, saying? Like, we no, skipped said, over okay. major okay. parts of the story, major important details, but we left in the you're about to get married to this guy, I know it's not going to happen episode. Like, what? <laughs> cut that shit out. Yeah, so that was, and eh. I mean, I know I kind of went into it in depth, but uh, we can get into it deeper when we actually review the show itself. But yeah, that's a fact. Be on the lookout for the should you watch God God of High School video. <laughs> it's gonna be a very interesting yeah, rating for this one. I'm gonna have to keep the same Demon Slayer Slayer energy for this. <laughs> right. Um, the last, I guess, the uh, new show I would just hit on would be the um third season. Of um Don Machi, uh, should you pick up chicks um in a dungeon, and um like first episode with that is definitely interesting too. So I just restarted the whole series, and it's uh it's, I mean it's decent. Long story short, um and like for, for like the action, even like the story, it goes it goes pretty hardcore in the harem aspect. I mean that's no lie, that's no lie. Um, but they do it they do it, they do it decently well. I got some thoughts about the second season that I'm got to get into right now. Um, but I mean, like overall, and like for the start of third season, I would definitely say, um, you know, peep that if you're looking for some um, decent action shown in right now. Uh, so I just uh, picked up that show and uh, been watching it close to finish already. Uh, I slept on it; it's fire. Um, but at the same time, uh, it worries me that is not it doesn't have any more hype than what it has. And that got me thinking that maybe solo leveling might not come out clutch because it's really slow solo leveling with a harem. Yeah, yeah, give or take. Mm, is it okay? I might watch it then. So I'm just like, it got it, it, it should have hype, but I don't know. You know, what I'm saying I don't know where people head at because ain't nobody talking about it. Eh, I mean, I, I I don't know. Like, I haven't really been searching for the anime community regarding this show um, specifically, but I do know like a decent amount of people do like it. I mean, and then plus for it to have like you know three seasons. Oh, I mean, like for it to start the third season. I mean, I feel like it's got to have natural hype based on that fact alone. I would think. Mm-hmm. But no, I definitely feel you there. I mean, like it definitely has a solo leveling aspect. I wouldn't say it's as dark as solo leveling slash like as independent because like homie's literally pretty much by himself compared to like the harem aspect of the show but i mean that could push the show like loki like the harem aspect can push the show by itself and again not gonna hardcore touch on the second season but if you already in the second season you know that's gonna get some other episodes right there i mean come on so yeah um I think. Oh, sorry. Did you have any other comments you wanted to add to it? Oh, player five. No, I'm good. Uh, Deuce. Anything new you've been watching? You wanted to add, or are you good? Yeah, anything that closed out? Watching much anime for real, but I watched Fire yeah. Force. Um, you caught up? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm caught up. Yeah, that's I'm not. probably my favorite anime of like the, the new. I, I I do have a question for the Fire Force niggas out there. I mean, you and. 
Player Five and Jug, I think everybody watches yeah, it. Yeah, I'm a Fire Probably Force nigga for sure. Yeah, so, uh, do we know this chick's power yet or not? Because yeah. I got to the part where they're showing the like I get her what power, chick? but did we get to like the time breaking OPness of this power yet or not? Oh no! Ooh. Oh, I mean the, the, the chick, the fifth whatever. Yeah, uh, no, no, they we, don't. We haven't talk seen about it since that episode. I believe. Oh, okay. Do we have any theories on what that could possibly be? Because I mean, I didn't spoil myself yet, but I am definitely very interested on like I could see how it could be broken, but I gotta go like compared to the other Adola burst niggas, like one who freezes time and one who literally moves moves faster than the speed of light. Like, how does like you know the fire prediction ability level up in y'all minds to that see, stage? This is my thing. I don't think is. I think she's improperly thinking about it. Because it's not fire prediction, because, like, when she box homeboy with the power, like, she's creating that fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we could come up with some BS for why she not, but yeah. she really is, because it don't pop off without her. So, I could see how she could get swole, because, like, if she literally just, like, can see a whole city, she could just draw a small circle from her perspective, but, boom, that whole city just lit the fuck up. But then yeah. how was she predicting his move? Like, you know how she was, like, being able... Because I just saw up to the part where they fought the black guy from the, from the whatchamacallit. And it seemed like she was also seeing his... Like, the trajectory of his strikes. You feel me? So, isn't I that, like, a, a form I of prediction a in a way? Of, of the two. Um, but, I mean, as okay. far as, like, the show in general... And if you're not caught up, I can understand why. But you might as well think about this season as, like, cut into even two or three parts... And the part that ended for her, we didn't really get that far depth into her ability, minus yeah. the whole like fire prediction and then like drawing out and exploding other people. Like that, yeah. we, we literally just got like that surface taste look um, from her ability. Um, as far as my guessing goes, it's a little, it's a little tough to say because, like, I mean, in my opinion, as far as like time manipulation goes, you can't really get a better ability than that. So, like, if Shinra was going up against her, she would have to use some hardcore strats, in my opinion, to really try and get a dub. Um, if we're thinking, like, along that kind of scale. So, I can't say for certain without getting some more. I mean, I don't know. I feel like, like, like Player 5 said, I feel like her power is already kind of, like, up there, for real. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's, it, it, I don't have to see no fights. And, like, of course, it depends on how she uses it, whether she could beat, like, a Shinra or something. Yeah. Her power is definitely better than, like, Pretty much everyone else is, is yeah. I mean, she, I think she, just, she does what she wants essentially. That's, that's true. I agree that it's swole. My thing is, I just still don't see like you know, I don't, I'm assuming that it's supposed to get to that level of potential because you saw how Sheena got his and then you know, developed it to moving faster than the speed of light. I can only assume that that was probably similar for his brother. Um, so I'm wondering, I'm assuming that there's levels above what she's doing today that will put her on par with them in terms of like. Maybe not in terms of skill, but in terms of power prowess, like what her power actually has the potential to do. So I'm just thinking at that base core, if any of y'all had ideas, what could turn it into something that could compete with time, basically. <laughs> that's that's my thing. Uh, it, I have no idea. Because really. I mean, to begin with, I never thought that Shinra would be going at the speed of light. Like, right. I was a nigga so, who didn't watch Fire <laughs> Force because I was like, oh, this shit look goofy. These niggas are just firefighters. Who was that nigga? That's literally what I thought it was. I was like, "Oh, this is garbage." Why the fuck y'all watch niggas put on fire? It's cold as fuck, bro. They fight fires every day. Uh, you know what I'll say is that, like, people powers get magnified through like those Adola links. Right. So, I honestly think they. And if you are, if you have an Adola burst, then it's irrelevant what your power is. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shinra can kick fire, uh, Show can slow shit down. But once you get an Adola link, like, your shit get ramped up so much, I don't even think it matters. Like, you basically body in any nigga who don't have an Adola link, and you gonna fight to stalemate against anybody that do. I don't, yeah, so to me, I... I as as soon as they like, yo, she's a pillar. I think her power is irrelevant. But I feel she, like even you could take anybody though, power. But I feel like it's still at the base though. Both those powers are still their core power, right? Like I don't know what shows core powers. I'm just assuming it's absorbing fire. So it's like, oh, I can see the logical stuff from absorbing fire 
to absorbing the heat of the universe. It's a big step, but like I see that. You feel <laughs> they, that's not like the thing. That's, that's that's not only a natural progression. That's it's like that's like that's 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 crazy to even that jump is ridiculous. I know <laughs> the jump is definitely ridiculous, but I'm saying you see still you can still see how it relates to the core power of absorbing fire. That's all I'm saying. So, so I'm, I I'm still feel like her Adola, like, whatever, is still going to relate to her core power of whatever it is that she's doing right now. That's what I'm if trying we had to think about. about Adola before before we saw show, saw show uh, before we saw show's power. There's no way anyone would have guessed um, getting to that, and that's like literally like a physicist who studies that every single day. Nobody would have thought that this would be stopping the time of the universe. No, uh, I that's like, so I no. don't even think. They gonna come from some some weird angle. I feel like but, for the power, but like you said, that's, just saying, that's not my argument. My argument is just that I still think that like uh, against what Player Five is saying, I still think that it will still sort of seem like it relates to what she had at the core. You get what I'm saying? That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying like they gonna come from, from some weird shit, bro. Mm-hmm. That we not gonna have no idea what it is. I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see how they gonna do how they gonna do it. Like for hey, they got for, another nigga too. A second nigga just popped up. So. Uh huh. I uh, I don't know if y'all caught up, caught up, but it's starting to seem like slowly but surely, this nigga uh, uh, Arthur is gonna become not useless. Oh, oh I never no. thought he I mean, was like, gonna... they, they they solidified that to me in the first episode of the season. What? Yeah, when he, when he went up against Shinra, that was dope. Like, mind controlled Shinra. I was like, that was mighty impressive. Like he was quick with the sword. If you look back on F one. Bro, the, I felt like he had got hype, but he was really performing like an ass for the whole show. He was, and then every now and again, he get one episode where he not ass. What is it? Oh, the, what's the ice guy from Fairy Tales? He was getting his kind of treatment because at first he was supposed to be Shinra's um, oh, rival. Mm-hmm. But then the Shinra star like just powering out out of nowhere, and then he was left in the dust. So, well, remember at the end they still gave him a little bit of respect to say like, "Don't forget about him with that electric bitch," because she was biting everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, like, to me, so, that's where he kind of got some respect because he's I guess he's the only one that could fight him, maybe because his yeah. plasma shit. And she broke him, so I felt like they was putting us some light respect. And I agree with what Joker said. I felt like when I seen him versus Shinra in that episode, I was like, "Oh, they trying to groom you a little bit." Like they're trying to put you up there, and and the writer from Soul Leader, that's what the writer does, though. Like he loves to do that with the the characters you expect the least of. Like look at what happened to Black Star in Soul Leader. Look at what happened to Maka. They basically she's the main character. They was like, "Bitch, you useless," but then kind of like go to her in a way, kid. You know, like I I expect it. I expected Def the kid to go hard the whole time, though. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know about, about I, mean, that. King, bro. I think the, the Arthur in the situation was kind of Black Star, and I think we expected oh. more from Maka. And I felt like it, it flipped where Black Star turned it up to eleven, and Maka kind of stayed meh. Uh, for the whole I thought time. you was about he to disrespect Def the Kid and say he was like that nigga Arthur. I was about to like, bro, cut no, the Jeff cut the podcast right now. Def the Kid was that nigga from day one. <laughs> Yeah. If anything, dumb niggas caught up to his level, and then right. it was more like, oh. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, they put some, that, I mean, the, the they put some respect on this dude. They are definitely there. If you really think about it, like, both of them are actually low-key Gs. Like, they have the ability, like, they have the ability to be low-key Gs. At the same time, don't forget, DTK's Achilles heel was that as soon as one of the gun uh, chicks weren't there, he couldn't do dick. He needed the balance, or else he literally was useless. So, I mean, like, are, are we, do we really blame DK for that? No. I mean, homie's still a G. But, I mean, Arthur's like the same thing in the sense that he has to feel like a legitimate knight when he fights or else he can't fight. But but Arthur really, like, my whole thing is about, like, with a shonen main character, you expect them to go above and beyond and save your day outside of their ability. And you kind of expect that out of the side character. Arthur Arthur does some good things, yes, but he isn't doing anything I wouldn't expect out of a third generation recruit Fire Force member. Shinra is balling out the motherfucking gym. You know what I'm saying? Like, get this nigga a uh, pay increase. That's all I'm saying. Is like, <laughs> I get that this nigga cold as he should be. They stayed at the first episode. Third gens are more powerful than all the other ones. He should be stronger than the rest of his bum ass team. Okay, but like. I don't know, bro. Like, I would trade that nigga for skateboard, homie. <clears throat> and it might be because he black. You feel me? But 
Oh, well, I mean, that, that's crazy. not fair. I mean, they literally compared my guy Ogum to, like, the first captain of the first squad. I mean, like, what? As soon as they put that respect on his name, it was already a wrap. Like, yeah. oh, was, like so, a big... So, story. MGG, if you have been caught up to the plot where Black Buddy was fighting the, the demon man. Uh, I don't think so. I might have seen Ooh. scenes of it if niggas was sharing it, but I, you know, I don't care about spoilers, so y'all can say whatever the fuck y'all want. But he, he just kind of spoiled it for you. Oh, okay. I wasn't paying attention, <laughs> so there's also that. But if I was, I also wouldn't care. <laughs> I mean, as soon as homie bust out the ink, I mean, it, it was a wrap. Like, he doesn't have like a lot of comparisons after that, so. So, I mean, I hear you there. All, all I'm saying is that, like, that that one example is pretty much, like, one of the only really good, obvious examples that you could use. I would actually be willing to, like, fight anything else. Because it's, I mean, it's pretty arguable. Because Arthur would be about that life sometimes. Yeah. yeah I just, I don't like nothing. his inconsistency. Yeah, That's... he ain't did nothing to deserve the hype. So... Mm. He did do something to deserve the hype. Like, when that nigga got um, his high hole silver... He went to captain level like instantly. <laughs> oh no, that nigga is hilarious. I, I, I think his character is amazing. When he like, oh, he yeah. be like delusional and thinking he like <laughs> fucking might. That shit is hilarious, bro. My oh. thing is, we need we need Excalibur from Soul Eater to show up and join this nigga. If those two right? were together, oh, this would the it would destroy would the show. Crazy. That shit would be hilarious. Plus, it would put him on Shinra tier, but it would also still keep him as like a core. Joe character. Because <laughs> so I thought they were going to do something like niggas. that when they uh went to uh China, but they didn't take they didn't take uh no they did take him, but he's he's not making he no connection inside. with none of these animals. Yeah, he um, went inside the fuck. Yeah. They I'm like, damn, so now they about to through. drop the fact that he low-key a genius, too. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, if y'all gonna be putting all this hype on this nigga, he can't be stupid 99% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, it takes a lot of his uh, key to use his genius. Yeah. That was yeah. actually a super random, impressive note, though. F around. Yeah. Um, and then I also, I mean, I know I'm over here turning this into a fucking fire force breakdown, but I'll fuck <laughs> with it. I'm sorry. Um yeah, we can talk about that shit. Uh, their their other uh reactors, uh, you know, we got Amar Amaterasu and now the Tabernacle. I wonder how many more reactors out there. How did they affect are they the still other? run by the same niggas like the church, or is it like different, ah, they all loose. All different reactors? Is is they went to like China. And yeah, found like a, another reactor that uh, instead of like uh, humans being out there protecting it, it's in the wild, and right. it turned like animals into like fire users. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, that's kind of dope. Right. I mean, it's goofy. It, I, it ain't went hard yet, so <laughs> <laughs> let me let me curb your enthusiasm real quick. Oh damn, that sucks. No, I think it was decent when they when he was fighting the uh, when he was in China. That was decent. Yeah. It's decent, but I'm not trying to hype him up. You know what I'm saying? Because like where your mind could go with that statement yeah. compared yeah. to what it actually is is two different things. That's a huge yeah. world building aspect. Like, and right. that oh, yeah, shit sure. give me hype, but it's not up. executed well, is what I'm hearing. Right. Well, it's not, it's, it's not like when you yet. found out there was dizzy destinies from other country, but then they it, it, had like shitty digivolutions, and you were yeah, just like, it's like that. What? <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't like, 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 execute it well yet. You like? I mean. I, I don't think we've had been through enough time to just yeah, call it. Really. But currently, with what we've seen, I'm you know I'm just trying to put on you know, it it's like it's a cold idea, but they definitely you know being goofy with it right now. Because that show was only like two like two or three episodes ago for real. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right. Um. Yeah, Fire Force is that shit. I fuck with That's it. a fact. That's summary. <laughs> and I also gotta uh, respect the fact that they they draw black characters well, diverse, mm -hmm. and not everybody's some rapping goofy nigga. Like I respect that. But he all got the him black a, characters are a black as fuck, though. You said what? All the black characters I saw so far have been swole as fuck though. Swole as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ogun bo catching bodies and uh, that other guy with the white hair. He was just a, a media ass nigga. Pause. He just came yeah. through. With the hands, that nigga definitely got him a black chick on the side. I, I know that you don't put that much respect on black people she, right? you in the gardens. Is it a sheep? I don't for, know. Is it for the? Because I thought well, the soul leader. Are we talking about? 
the author or so isn't it a scene? Uh, fact I check somebody know. oh it's a guy i checked yeah. okay I mean, no, he must. I you know, know why you miss Soul Eater or not? Then that shit was weird, bro. That shit <laughs> was weird. Hold on, are you saying? Oh, the same person that wrote Soul Eater wrote right yeah. Fire Force. Yep. Oh shit! I had no idea. Yeah, that's why you. I wonder why somewhere. I was fucking talking about Soul Eater. I'm like, that's, yeah. that shit <laughs> random as fuck. Why the fuck <laughs> y'all bringing that shit in there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. Yeah, the, the world may intersect. Believe it or not, you never know. It is definitely possible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess we can... Any other last closing comments on new episodes, Fire Force, anything like that? Or we can move on to putting some respect on the boys. Um, yeah, I'm good. Boys, it is. Fire right. Force got my respect. The fact. So, the boys, uh, season two. I mean, the shit ain't stopped hitting hard since episode one. Even though them niggas been giving it some trash. Trash readings, bro. Yo, because they still? exposing people, bro. They don't like that. <laughs> you still giving a shitty rating? No, I haven't seen. I didn't check these few episodes, but I just remember the first couple. Because I would, I had to go back to episode one because my uh wife was arguing with me about uh the head exploding yeah. thing. She uh, thought it was wife. yeah. She thought it was um that ball chick from the hospital. I was like, no shit, that shit happened in episode one, bro. That's yeah. somebody else. <laughs> Yo. Yo, anybody else? Um, I guess semi disappointed. Huh? You still think it's her? Yeah. You think That's it's who? How is her? The ball headed chick? Mm-hmm. She would kill Storm Star- yeah. Stormfront immediately if it was her. Stormfront was abusing the shit out of her. She would definitely mm-hmm. go, oh, that bitch, kill her first. So for the fact that Stormfront ain't dead, I don't think it's her. So if it's something related to it, it has to be like. The fact that they show up the exact same power? Well, no, bro. If you go to episode one, they blew up the CIA agent's head the yeah, same I, way. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So you saying it was her that time? <laughs> I don't know if it was exactly her, but it was related to her somehow. It got to be because they got the uh, same power. I, I, I think that's a big stretch. I mean, I, I can see as far as like the power similarities go, but... I mean, like, why would you think then it's just the head? I mean, like, from the kills we actually saw her do, it was full body, wasn't it? Yeah. So well, it was I, like... I assume she could do any part she wants. I mean, true. I mean, again, like, it was like the logic is there. I'm just saying, like, why show... Like, why why, why the big tease then? Like this? And let me clarify, I want it to be her. Oh, uh, okay. That's <laughs> part of the I'm like, I don't know how she made it over there from one episode. Like, they were in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. She got all the way to wherever the fuck they was at. But, killed all these but I'm telling you, it has to be related, though. So, like, you know, at the begin, I don't know if you guys watched, when you clicked the episode, you watched the preview of the previous episode. Uh-huh. They they show her, they sh- they show her, like, they highlighted her for a reason. So it has to be, uh-huh. it has to be related. Sometimes. Oh, that's what you're saying. Uh, okay. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to change the subject to Huey, because he's been pissing me off lately. I don't know if he's been <laughs> bothering anybody else. <laughs> Uh, Huey, uh, I never liked him. I, I, I liked because I, I want no, him no. to have his come up moment. <laughs> I want him to have that moment where he just, you know, you know, I don't know, just stride a nigga out. But it's like, yo, this nigga is stupid. Yeah, bro. like he actually don't have any talent. <laughs> I feel like it's the like. I feel like he's the Seth Rogen executive producing part of the show because you know Seth Rogen like executive EP the show or whatever. But I feel like the shit that happens to Huey is like those parts that Seth wrote. Because you know how he has to add the penis jokes and all that shit. Like, I feel like that's why the Mother's Milk thing happened the episode before getting choked out by the dick. I was like, I, that definitely feels like a Seth <laughs> Rogen add to that episode. Like, he was like, yeah, and he gets choked out by a dick. Period. <laughs> like, like add that yeah, shit. In the mouth, like some, something that goes high in the writer's room and they just wrote that shit. Yeah, I feel like the stuff that happens to you, especially in this at recent episode with the porn thing, it just all struck me as like Seth Rogen added this into this shit. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the boys is weird. I read the comments like there is some weird shit that happens. I don't remember all this stuff, but yeah, the lamplighter stuff just pissed me the fuck off. Like with Starlight yeah. and all that, I was just like, bro, really, really. <laughs> And she was dumb, too. I was like, she deserves to get caught, bro. She was dumb. You don't even fuck with your mom. Why would you go meet her while you're a fugitive? 
Like, do you think your mom is smart enough not to get followed? Yeah, that was just stupid. <laughs> and then, like, that nigga, Huey going like, yo, let's go save her. Like, no. Nigga, I'd have been like, bro, I love pussy as much as any nigga. <laughs> <laughs> right? But I'm sorry, bro. You want me to go into who house? Homelander house? You, she did. See, and then that's be the the part that kind of like takes out the 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 specialness of of um what you would call it for me, uh because I feel like at certain times they want to show you that like it doesn't play out like that. Like if you go and do the the hero endeavor thing, it like doesn't work out. Like they want to go like realistic sometimes, but then other times they do this like. No, the hero still gets saved kind of thing, like they did with this whole Maeve thing at the end, where I was like, yeah, I get it, but it will also, like, I feel like it didn't help Huey learn his fucking lesson about, like, stop, like, stop. And yeah. then, like, nobody abused him afterwards, like, they were just like, oh, blah, 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 they just let it ride. I was like, bro, he, if Lamplighter didn't die, like, y'all would have had, you know what I'm saying? Mother's yeah. Milk, you could have gone back to your kids, and y'all just letting this nigga off the hook like it's nothing. Y'all was at least kind of mad at Frenchie when he told you about the damn kids. Like, why he ain't stopped that shit, but... I don't know. I feel like they cut this nigga too much slack, in my opinion. I feel like he's so pathetic that everybody has grown to treat him like they child that they need to protect. And, and, and the part... And, like, there that happens in real life. Like, you yeah. can see that with real people in real life, which is why I'm just like, mm, I hate it from a, you know, outside viewer... But I can yeah. definitely see where it's going. It's like, yo, how you gonna trip on me? Huey just did this. Like, yeah, but that's Huey though. <laughs> yeah. You know better. He his ass should know better too, bro. See, but you would be that nigga arguing. And it's just like, bro, but it's Huey, bro. Come wow. on. <laughs> wow. Nah, I mean, to, to, to me, that whole rescue arc, whatever you want to call that, that rescue chapter. I don't know. I mean, like, it, it, it probably was, like, comic, um, um, whatchamacallit, canon, but it just seemed to... What do you mean, it, rescuing the, the Starlight? Like, rescue Starlight? Starlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I it's don't like, It's like, like pretty much everything went wrong, but got lucky, and they were able to make it No, out. the comic is... I'm sure they didn't explore that in the comic, because the comic yeah, is way more no fucked more. up. Yeah, Black he raped Butcher. Much, right? <laughs> <laughs> Black Noir raped Butcher and his, and his wife in the comics, I believe. So oh, yeah, like Black Noir died the, in the episode, the correct? Guy. Huh? Black Noir died in the episode, right? I don't think so. I think they just gave him the nut allergy. I'm sure he got the, 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 the thing pain. in time. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, in the comic, Black Noir is like. Anyway. I mean. Yeah, he's just. I think he's worse than Homelander in the in the comic. I mean, saying like they have the same. Yeah, he's he's the more evil, I think. But they, they yeah. have the same power and everything. They're like clones of each other or something. Oh, so I, I don't know that they... word. Oh yeah, snap. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. So I mean, wait, wait. So pause. I mean, that is a decent question. Wait. So is Black Noir supposed to be dead right now or no? Yeah, I don't. So. I, I don't know. I don't I, think so. Yeah. And I don't think he is dead. Mm -hmm. I, I think like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't have a massive nut allergy, but I'm not gonna lie. If it's between dying and re fee for that EpiPen, I think most niggas don't get to it. <laughs> right. And then not even superpower niggas. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, now somebody please fact check me. If you got a nut allergy and you like, nah, son, that nut get on you. That no pause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, please frame, bro. That's a free. Matter of fact. I'm done commenting for the game. Motherfuckers ain't about to get me on Goofy of the year. I think he was able to get the Epi Pen in time. I feel like if he died for real, for real, they would put they put more sauce on it. I don't think I don't think he's dead. Plus, I think we still have to explore this like faction thing that's going on in Vought between mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they're trying to say that Stormfront is a part of it. I'm assuming yes. Um and then I don't know if they're trying to say that the government guy is the... Uh, I'm just going to call him Gustavo Fring. If Gustavo Fring is the other faction. But, um, yeah, that part just is the is the big question for me. Because, like, with the Stormfront stuff, I see it all as disingenuous. Like, genuine to a degree, but really using Homelander at the end. But I, I don't... You know what I'm saying? I can see how people easily see it the other way, too. As in, those two really do 
love each other. But to me, I, I feel like Homelander's getting finesse. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, it's, 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 I, I didn't think it was a question. He just he just literally fits the nasty, like, goal. Like, blonde hair, blue-eyed, perfect yeah. white man. Right. So. Yeah. You know something that kind of crazy to me? And um, because, you know, since we talk about how these niggas be putting uh, society on blast, yo, I peep, there's a black man leading this racist company, bro. I'm just saying, like. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was thinking the entire time. <laughs> there should be some cones out there. Front and Storm right. front is a racist. How, how does that work? Right. Nah. Hey, that show niggas, you will sell your race out for a couple dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Nazis would. There's definitely a nigga out there that'll that'll be a, a Nazi spokesman for a couple hundred. No, I'm saying I don't know if the Nazis would sell out all the Nazis just for some money. Uh, I don't know. Shit, I said nigga Hitler what happened once the, the war started losing shit. I think <laughs> Let's Nazis get away would from sell a nigga. Oh, out low key, oh look, he did he did bring the Japanese in. You're right, you're right. Yeah, even um, what you call it, the um, the Italians, uh, Nazis considered them an inferior race. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how white niggas think more white niggas less, but that's on them, bro. <laughs> hey. yeah. Two plus two equals nine. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, other than that, how do y'all feel about uh, uh, baby moms? Butcher's Butcher's wife and that whole scenario with the kid. Uh, I okay. was kind of like, she should have. I would have just dipped with Butcher. But then again, I, I get the mom aspect of it. I got a hot take theory right here. Hot take theory. Mm -hmm. I think it's a strat. I don't I don't think a, a Butcher would be married to somebody so pathetic. I mm -hmm. think she got a little more grit about her than that because think about it like she lived through direct contact with with homelander you know what i'm saying like yeah. most people don't have that luxury she lived through it set herself up to be in a good place you know what i'm saying i'm not saying she's the best i think it could be a strat after homelander comes out maybe she was like all right bro if she was being realistic it's dead you're never gonna have a regular life homelander know about you let me give you the skinny all right so next time they come through you know what I'm saying? Play with them, go with them, cause you safer than with them than you are against them. As long yeah. as you keep your convictions, right? Like, yeah. I mean, the, Ryan literally pushed that nigga Homelander. You know, hey, bro, you asshole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you know you can't fight that nigga Homelander except with yeah. Ryan. So he really uh, the only hope. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I did think it was dumb, like how the whole. If, they, if she really was like lying to the little boy the entire time, he was and, and from where the way things go, you know that he would be pissed off when he find out. So I feel like it could yeah. could all be like a ploy to to from that homelander. I don't know, but I also think that Stormfront is trying to she gonna try and steal steal homelander's kid too, because oh yeah, homelander I think that's like, definitely leverage against homelander. Yeah, um, at some point, so. I, that's what I felt too. I felt like he's getting finesse. But I'm just like, yo, he's just so, so dumb. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know what I don't naive. understand? From a from a Vought standpoint, why would you ever want uh, natural born superheroes? From a Vought standpoint, like, why would you ever want that? Yeah, I don't, I don't see so why Vought. But they paying to keep them housed and all that. Like, they should have killed that little boy. Like, I'm not saying, like, that's a good thing. But just from an evil standpoint, it's like, yo, if we have the monopoly on how this is going, I'm like, bro, then we can control the world. But if superheroes can just fucking make more, that just limited the how much our product is worth. But Why would we let this kid live? Why would we even let Homelander get a chance to know that this is possible? I think they just... um. I think it's Vogelbaum, because like how they made it seem to me is that he somehow had a change of heart over the years and he became more good, quote mm -hmm. unquote, I guess. And he I think he's the one that, that hid them away, right? Because mm -hmm. he even even now he, he seems like he regrets regrets all the things that he did. Oh, so you're talking about the old man? Yeah, the, the old man in the wheelchair. Yeah. I 
Yeah. So I mean, like, let's think about it this way. Once again, why I say that's that that's them being stupid is like, why shouldn't you hide him in plain sight? If you hide him in plain sight and he gets superpowers, you can be like, hey, he's just like all the other Vault kids that got superpowers. Oh, and worst case, Homelander is like, yo, you injected my kid with this thing, and it's still the same scenario, and nobody would ever have to know he's natural born. That's just such a huge plot hole to me. I'm like, who who would concoct this plan to stick this nigga in this facility that literally says, like, yo, this nigga's special? Mm-hmm. They they horrible super I villains, like, bro. I, I, don't know if, I don't know if they would chalk it up to the the split that they're talking about, the two factions within Vought, and mm-hmm. maybe one of those people has the like stupider idea of letting him live. And the other faction is the one that I don't know, it's blowing people's heads off, or it's the same faction. Who the fuck knows? But I, yeah. I if, if we they find out Vaught isn't that... factioned, then yeah. there's gonna be a giant plot hole. So they better be some type of faction going. Right. Yeah, because does Gustavo know about Homelander's kid? I uh... I really don't know now at this point. Cause my thing is, oh no, he did, right? Because isn't that what Butcher used as a, a ploy? Yeah, because Homegirl that, knew uh, the, the used-to-be head, like the used-to-be supervisor of Homelander, because she knew about that. So, I yeah. mean, I figure if she knew, then a decent amount of the company had to know. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know why they hated this. But, but Butcher did use it as leverage, like, two episodes ago to not die. So, at least, at the very least, he knows now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> true. Know. Yeah. Yeah, Gustavo definitely knows. But then it wasn't... So I think... Maybe, like, the mom is just special then. So maybe she's really the one they were trying to hide anyway. Because I'm sh- these heroes have been fucking people all this time. Ain't no other baby true. popped up. That's true. So, That's very true. That could be a thing. I mean, you could still... I mean, even if that's... Eh. I mean, like, again, with the whole villain standpoint that uh, Player 5 was talking about, I still don't see why not just body the mom in the first place. I assume because that's like a, a scientist type thing where you want to, like, understand it, maybe. Oh. Yeah. Even even still, my my argument is always that the hide in plain sight method in the case oh, of yeah, where yeah, we I know superheroes that. pop out is more effective than putting this nigga in some off-site ass place like Nigga is Homelander. He going to find you. Right. And then it makes it way easier for him to find you because mm-hmm. <laughs> he just know. Yeah, my my other thing about that, too, is like the um, I just lost the the point that I had. Oh, like this whole checks and balances system on the world, because it's like from the perspective of the show today, it looks like Homelander is like the strongest nigga. And then maybe probably Stormfront now that she's introduced. I, I think she's sh- I think she's like playing coy, but might actually be stronger since she's technically this nigga's great 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 ancestor. But I just find it weird that there's no checks and balances introduced yet to these heroes. Like right now, it seems like we're playing a lot of mental ploys, but I do feel like there might be some physical ploy we have. Like that's why I liked that Black Noir was kind of like um, working for the government. Because I'm like, oh, okay, this kind of, like, adds the checks and balances. Because I still don't see how the government is able to really keep a foothold against Homelander. Like, outside of the mental aspect of, like, oh, maybe he doesn't want to seem like a bad person. But if it got to a point where he really doesn't give a fuck, I'm still not seeing the check and balance of, like, this is how we stop this nigga. And I feel like that's there, but, like, no one's played that card yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of how it was in the comics, like, Black Noir was, yeah, he's like the assassin for them to, anyway, to keep niggas in check. Yeah, they can but, pop niggas' heads, so. Yeah. Them yeah, niggas, they, they, that they, nigga they Homelander, was, Homelander was really looking around like, yo, that's crazy. These niggas' heads <laughs> popping. <laughs> that shit ain't gonna happen to me, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, he, the way he was looking out. around is like when a drunk nigga at a party get up talking about who all ass he can be. Like, that nigga's just looking around like, that's crazy, bro. He ain't gonna look at me, though. <laughs> this ain't about to be me, but that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, that girl yelled at him, talking about do something like, bitch, what? What you want? <laughs> want me to beat the air? Up, His hands are literally <laughs> exploding in front of me. <laughs> and, and that right there is the worst part about being famous. Because if this was real life and this happened, <laughs> niggas will be on Homelander and Storm for an ass instantly. Yeah. Like the memes, everybody will be on their ass. But if we being real, what in the fuck would they Does do? They actually do. <laughs> Like, yo, like, what do you want me to do, nigga? Like, <laughs> except look like, hey, that's crazy. Yeah, more than the ship. This is like the first time where it was like, oh, yeah, this, yeah, like, no, he can't stop this. Because I feel like, at least on the plane, he could have done some shit. His ass just chose not to. Like, but this one, yeah, you, you valid point. Like, what could, like, at this point, half the room is dead. So even if he found out who was doing it by some happenstance, Half the room is dead already. Like, and he probably gonna kill the rest before Homelander get to that nigga. So, it's over with. Oh, worse, they. I don't know if it work on Homelander, but they might just blow his head up too. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, they did blow up one superhero head fast, homie. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. you know what? They that's what A-Train? got me thinking. I missed that part. <laughs> Not A-Train. no, not A Train. No, the other one. The other one. Oh, the one thing. he was competing against. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that that's what makes me think is the church. Oh, did. Wait, yeah, now that you mentioned it, then maybe it's the church. Oh, oh yeah, no, you guys just brought that to my mind because I forgot yeah. to bring this up in previous boys' conversations because I like the symbolism to the real world that they do a lot. And that's what I had felt about the church, too. I felt like the church was giving me those, like, this is how they're going to integrate the religious allegory or whatever you want to call it into the the main story so i do think they have like a strong role to play plus they've been giving me the weirdest i mean they've given everybody the weirdest of vibes if it's not the freshka that got you it's like the the magically knowing everything about everybody's backstory shit that i was like uh okay y'all are on some other shit but there, there might be a point there with the with the church yeah, I mean, I completely forgot about that. It could definitely be the president of the church, or at least someone like a close to his ranks within the church. I completely yep. forgot about them. But yeah, I mean, like now that we're talking about it, I definitely think it is them now. That's the only things that would make sense. And why like the whole killing of the race buddy would even be relevant. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I feel like all of this was a ploy, like if it was the church, right? Then mm-hmm. it would be okay. So this is why I think it might not be the uh, the the church because that first lady dying didn't make no sense for the church plot. Maybe we find out something that does. But right now it does make sense. Like okay, if you start killing people at the hearing, that's gonna weaken Vought no matter what. Like obviously you can't tie Vought to it, but like in any court that will weaken the argument. Right. Okay which gives you some way to put a foot in, and then you kill a direct competitor to A-Train, and everybody else just casualties, you know? Yeah. Because you can't have Vault go down, because if Vault go down, then you lose your whole argument piece of, of, hey, we can get you back in. Right. That's right. Yeah, I'm suspect on this church. They gave me the strong Scientology vibe slash... Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> celebrity religion thing, but I also think, like I said, they might also be an allegory for like how religion comes to play in modern society and as well, like in some other aspects. But that that fresco shit is funny as fuck to me. <laughs> hey, would you like a fresco? Okay, got it. Um, well, yeah. Anything else on the boards that we want to unpack? Uh, Butcher's backstory to me is kind of a uh, meh. Like, uh, I get it. Don't get it. I, I think maybe it's because it just pretty much relates to explaining why he, why Huey is still here. <laughs> oh, true. It's a why. I don't give as much of a fuck. But I do like the fact that his auntie was badass, like a two, like couple episodes ago. She I was slinging that, that dope, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and I love the way the black noir shit like came through. Like he blew, he blew that whole fucking. House up, bro. And then with a the dog know. barking it, like I really felt it in that episode. I like that a lot. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know what? I do not like uh Butcher getting a backstory. Uh personally, I thought I always in my head, 
literally in my head, I was like, bro, I swear to God, Butcher gonna be a Zap Brannigan ass nigga. Like, like, yo, I got all the tales, bro. No, like, but actually his background wasn't that hard. Like, I always felt that Butcher was just gonna be a regular ass nigga, and that would have been funny as fuck to me. Because, you know, he always so vague when he be telling stuff. Like, yeah, don't worry about it. I got a plan. You know what I'm saying? And I just be like, no, you don't, nigga. Like, I just, I fully expected this nigga to be a old Zap brand again. Like, uh, uh, like fucking, uh, what's that nigga from Pirates of the Caribbean? The main character. Y'all know that nigga name. John Jack Sparrow. Jack oh, um. Yeah, just like a actually not badass, but low-key filling a role type nigga. Yeah. But now it's like, yo, his background is slowly but surely showing, like, no, he actually is, like, about this action. He's just a piece of shit for some reason. Right. So. Um, uh, anything else? Any other closing comments? All right. So last part of Decent News, just cut the check. Uh, it is the AZ, Azeron, AZ Iran. I don't really know how to pronounce this. But basically, it is a keyboard for your PC shaped um it looks like it's shaped like a hand um i guess it's like some ergonomic thing to help with um the people who use the w the wasd method and i guess don't have a controller to play games on their pc so <laughs> what do you all think about this i don't know what the price is but let me see if i can find it real quick i bet that missed calls 150 150 euros so 175 dollars and 95 cents usd for this thing um and it i guess it maps to your hand size but they only have medium and large so i'm gonna just put my thing in right now it's not gonna fit my hand so i'm out <laughs> it's only got two sizes i don't see a small law here uh i'm out mm. so <laughs> i don't even i don't even not, i'm not gonna add nothing else to it y'all can go ahead and say what y'all gotta say about it uh this is what i'm gonna say about it is that this is only gonna be good on a, a couple of games right because if if the game is better on controller it's better on controller um it's gonna be good for a couple of games where like you would need this many keys because they got versions of this already where you just get the wasd right so like this one you really mm. would have to have to put in like 20 20 keys for this is all so like world of warcraft uh, yeah. uh what's that one game um dota not dota because league and dota you could use this but honestly this is just going this is just extra this is being extra okay. as fuck for league and dota um but starcraft starcraft oh gotcha yeah you could use it for like starcraft there's mm -hmm. a few games where this would get maximized any other game like league and shit like you could just get the regular ones they got out you know what I'm saying? And be mm -hmm. decent. So I'm like, uh, I feel like this is only going to fit a certain amount of people. And them niggas that are good enough for to make this worth being $150-something, they probably already good with what they got. So I'm like, I don't know who buying this. I don't know. But you're not. <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I, I don't even want to be good enough to need something like this. All right. Yeah. Like that, that, that like Finger speed and hand-eye coordination would have to be like off the charts for you to fully utilize the full potential of this device, and I just don't see it. Like I don't know. I mean, like I'm not a big computer guy, so I could definitely say that I'm speaking on this with a bit of bias, just because I'm not really into you know PC gaming just in general. Um, but I would figure that I mean, like considering like the sensitivity that this like keyboard actually is where it doesn't even really need that much pressure to actually activate the keys in the first place. I mean, your kind of control would have to be like redonkulous again for you to really utilize this device. So I think it's I personally think it's eh. So I personally just wouldn't get it. All right. Deuce, any comments? No, I don't even know what that shot's on. Though. In summary, I don't PC games, so no. <laughs> Yo, what's up? MGG here. I'm guessing you love anime. Well, we already know you love anime, but where are you getting your anime fix? Where are you watching it as the Master is Demon Power and Black Clover? Or Ogun turning it up to 11 in Fire Force? Well, you better be watching it on Funimation. 
If you're looking to rewatch something old or start something new, Funimation has got you covered with hundreds of anime from Shonen to Shoujo. Y'all remember those days having to scour the interwebs to watch your favorite shows or waiting years to finally see the show you've been watching get dubbed? If you're a dub watcher or you've mastered your Sharingan and watched the subs, Funimation has got you covered. They have episodes available the same day they air in Japan and the dub versions within two weeks. No more 720p episodes of your favorite anime in like 20 parts. If all that wasn't enough, with the Funimation subscription, you also gain access to members-only content and shop exclusives, meaning you can finally reach the peak of your fandom power. On top of that, you get a two-week free trial to get started. So why are you still listening to me? Go to Funimation.com forward slash subscribe now, or click the link in the show notes, and start streaming your favorite anime ad-free today. Got it. Alright, so let's move on to the anime segment. First on the docket, uh, let's go with uh, what Isekai world would you want to be in? And uh, stipulation, well, you can introduce it, player five. All right. Um, so, yeah, um, just wondering what Isekai world would you want to be in, giving your own personal skill sets? Um, but here's the deal you would be like a mid tier character, right? So don't expect to be like, yo, I'm the carry toe of the world or nothing like that. You're not the main character, but you also not you who would be like fucking bottom tier. You know what I'm saying? You're just a mid tier character. You might be able to make a name for yourself. You might not. Depends on what world you go in with your skills. What world would you choose? Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh no, you can't. I've been talking this whole time. I think go I'll I'll go ahead and start since I proposed the question. Oh, go ahead. Um, I would probably pick. I'm stuck between two things. Uh, I'm stuck between um, Inuyasha and No Game No Life. Um, for for sep- completely separate reasons. Um, no Game No Life is because like I think that I'm decent at least with strats. And I'm decent with making reasonable gambles. <clears throat> and then no game, no life. <clears throat> you can literally get anything by making a game. Like I could go to you and be like, yo, MGG, I want everything you you got, bro. I, I even want your wife, son. And we about to play space to do it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And if I win, <laughs> it's all mine. You know what I'm saying? So I'm wow. like, I feel like I could definitely pick a couple niche games or word it. And it's all about wording. Like, so if you like a fucking wordsmith lawyer type nigga, you definitely can finesse niggas. I will finesse the shit out of your average person. It's just like, oh, well, technically I said this thing and this thing. This means that, no, nah, I won, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll finesse my way to a decent living in that world. I firmly believe it, especially after watching the anime and seeing how goofy the, the majority is. And then I say Inuyasha because, like, it'd be cool to have some powers. And, it, yes, it's a scary world where niggas will run your fate, but there's this thing about feudal Japan. And I think fans of um, of Kingdom, like myself and MGG, will appreciate, like, there's just this thing where it's like, bro, if I get a band of niggas, I probably mm-hmm. could finesse my way to being warlord in this bitch. Yeah, <laughs> like, wow. I don't even have to be talented. Yeah, a loose demon could come through and wind scar your whole shit away, like all hundred of them niggas gone. But if I'm just, not if I just stay low, low key about it mm-hmm. and don't bring in that type of you know smoke, I could definitely have my own little homestead that I'm running. And to add to that, as a mid mid tier character in you in Inuyasha, you pretty much have those two routes: either a you're probably can do that stay low-key enough become a warlord or just do something that basically can help you survive in most cases of the world or b you end up being part of the three or four major teams mm-hmm. in inuyasha so you're either riding with shishomaru as a mid-tier character riding with inuyasha as a mid-tier character or riding with naraku as a mid-tier character so either way you're pretty much safe as long as you avoid other niggas. Yeah, for as long as you avoid boxing with niggas, like, because the power tier in, in Inuyasha jump quick. Don't yeah. just box with no loose nigga. He might evaporate you, bro. That's a fact. Anybody walking <laughs> by themselves is going to kill you. Big facts. Don't trust <laughs> no nigga. If you walk into town by yourself, bro, you got to go. You can't stay here. Oh. Mm. Uh, You could go, uh, Jug, if you want to. Or did you, was that it? Yeah, that's it for me. Um, 
You know what? I guess some kind of just I guess for safety for argument's sake and to not really define hardcore, but when you think me tier, I would think like in a society or in a group, you providing like a reasonable amount of work. We can get like, you know, highlights here and there, but nothing really too fancy. When I think about it like that, I would be down for like um for like um that time I was reincarnated as a slime and be like a member of like um the slimes territory right now just doing like i don't know some blacksmith <laughs> stuff some like like just like a chill kind of occupation kind of work simply because at least in that world because of like who the slime is and what he's actually been doing like for common citizens under him like there's not really any just random danger the biggest thing i would be worried about with inuyasha as like you guys already touched on is that if like inuyasha or like a big name isn't there you can still get run up by just any demon i mean like demons do exist and just be chilling so unless like someone's literally like a lookout like for like literally miles away just be like bro we're gonna see a demon in like a week i ain't about it okay (laughs) (laughs) it it definitely is a gamble a mother can run up and turn your whole town to dust (laughs) Right. So that's why I'm just ain't about that. At least from what I'm seeing from the slime, though, homie literally has an aura that just keeps mother effers away and just not about that life. So that alone just sets my mind at ease that I'd be decent with. And then just make some casual cast and make uh, the casual leaving, a casual living. Because all the other isekais, again, you got some element no matter what it is, but something that could just run up, knock on your door, and you will get body and have no kind of warning, no kind of, hey, what's going on? No, it's just you will get body just that easy. And I ain't about that life. Yeah. See, the only uh, issue I have with like the slime world, just to kind of touch on what you were saying, is I feel like, bro, there's not a place for me to get my own or make my own. Because that world low-key kind of dangerous. I mean, if you stay around Slime Homie, you good. But at the same time, I feel like if I'm with Slime Homie, I can't do no debaucherous things. And I'm like, bro, I live in the real world as kind of a, a safe guy. I'm ready to start gambling in this isekai, you feel me? Damn. Um, <laughs> All I'm going to say, though, bro, is like them side characters and isekais that do be gambling do get got. That's so, true. Plenty of times. That's true. I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, that that just shows how we different people. So, mad respect, but can't jump on. Um, if I'm tossing mine out, I think I'm gonna have to go Digimon. Uh, mostly because I feel like, uh, and here's my interpretation of mid tier. <laughs> so I looked up the stages again for a reminder. So they have six stages. I'm assuming as a mid tier, you definitely can't go to Mega. Um, or probably anything you've seen Ty or Matt do or any of the main characters do. So whatever Digimon I have is not going that high. Uh, I would want to say Ultimate, but I still think that that would consider me a little bit special. So I would say at the very least... Champion. uh, Yeah, Champion. So my my Digimon could probably evolve to one stage occasionally. Um, And I think if I pick the right Digimon in that scenario, I'm pretty much straight, especially if I'm not trapped in the digital world. If I'm trapped in the digital world... That changes things, especially. You don't get if, to pick your own Digimon, though, bro. Oh, that was well, a fact. definitely getting a big ass buddy. No, but the no. First of all, uh, third <laughs> season buddy uh, created his own. That's a fact. <laughs> so, so keep oh, that in mind, niggas was created true. on the other ones. Niggas got spirit. But he was in the mid tier. No mid tier characters creating their own. Oh, yeah. I feel you. Oh. I feel you. I feel you. But niggas still remember in that third, that same third season, niggas was getting all types of mid tier characters getting crazy. Itmon. Yeah. He tur- he his evolution was hard, bro. But he seen bitch made in his rookie form. But that nigga when he got on that motorcycle with the pistols, stop it, bro. That was a <laughs> mid tier character evolution right there. That wasn't no special shit. So I'm just saying, like I I get you that it is luck of the draw, but it's still mad. It still attempts to match the person. I think too to a degree, even as a mid tier character. 
And, so and you don't really got to worry about a human getting dropped. There's been like one human death in like eight seasons of Digimon. Right. <laughs> so, so your numbers exactly. are Exactly. That's why I'm going with Digimon. Yeah. That's... If, if <laughs> I stay in the human world, I think I'm good. The digital world, I still think there's a level of risk because it depends on how they want to ride it out. Like, because if I'm if I'm going during one of the hot times, meaning an uh, evil nigga came up and he's trying to take over the digital world. Oh, my Digimon is definitely a slave. Season two, <laughs> season two, Digimon getting caught up being slaves and shit, having to break them chains. Yeah, that's happening to me. But if it's just like, oh, one of the peaceful times, oh yeah, sure, we we good. Mm-hmm. Shit, even if it's a war time, I'm still going Digimon because I'm gonna just stay in the real world, bro. I'm gonna let everybody else like. That's if take you have the option to, my nigga. So 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 <laughs> so, so you telling me, you you chilling in the crib and your Digimon like, hey, dudes, like. You know my world getting shadow. You think we can slide over there and help <laughs> save it? You go look them in the eye and be like, nah, bro. Uh, uh, nah, uh, I'll be like, who does? UFC this? on in 10 minutes. I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. To your Digimon? Hell yeah. Wow. That nigga is not going to evolve shit for you, bro. That, I don't need him to, bro. Actually, no, I'll okay. slide, but we're going to be in a group. Because I, I, I'm a mid-tier guy, right? Yeah. We're going to be in a group with some raw-ass niggas. I don't gotta do shit. I don't oh, gotta do shit. I don't consider any of the kids in the in any of the things as mid tier. To I be definitely honest, definitely do. Think about uh, what's what? that nigga name? You can't even remember his name. Joe. Think about yeah. Joe. Come on, Joe. Joe got all the way to mega level though. <laughs> okay, he was like the last nigga to do it, and it was super lackluster. He is the perfect example of a non main character mid tier nigga that was along for the ride, and they was like, "Yo, fam, you know you gotta evolve because everybody else did, right?" Dude's finna get the crust of pettiness. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> crust of pettiness. You've reached your peak pettiness. Now we can go to mega level. That's all? That's all? I already got that. It's like the, the moment that he chooses to leave the digi desk and hang it to yeah. get back to the earth world is the day that his crest glow. He's just so shaking. <laughs> Nigga, that's day one. Yeah. <laughs> it's time. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, cut that Digimon and shit out, bro. We out of here. <laughs> Pettymon! <laughs> oh, my God. Damn, bro. That's not just... Hey, if I get an Ogremon or a Leomon, I'm co- I'm good, bro. I'm straight. I need me a Digimon that's okay with, like jokes because i'm definitely flaming like bro some niggas like bro how did you go from being hard to like looking like this bro like if i got an ogre mind i gotta flame that nigga or if i get that one po- digimon that's just like a talking piece of shit like bro i gotta flame you, <laughs> you a giant piece of shit oh <laughs> Wow, bro, that's your life partner though bro i know and that then i will hope he could take it you know <laughs> I'm just like, bro, I don't know Digimon for me because them niggas be so, bro, and they be trying to first friendship. I like, bro, I don't get no fuck about this world. I'm out. Going home, bro. <laughs> Had me stuck in this digital world with no bitches. Digi food. No, I'm gone. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, Deuce, I need you the last one. I don't know, nigga. No, I already went. My my pick is Digimon for sure. Oh, okay. Now I got uh, a question. Real, real question. Real question for real grown folks here. Uh, if one of these bad bitch Digimon come through, what's up? Oh, uh, sma- you've been in there like six months. You gonna smash? I might have to. You know? come through. Have naked. I gotta make sure she ain't got no virus. Her code ain't got no virus or nothing. Damn. <laughs> How would you make sure though? Like there is no make sure. Is there ain't out. no digi STD test up Thank in there the that you know of? That you know of? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, the only test I could think of would literally be like the code that you would have to write. Like, you would have to write it in the digital world, like, what a test would look like. Look, mm-hmm. it's just pretty much just a little virus scanner, bro. They, they, they like, online code. So I just need to help me, like, the, um, what's the name of that shit? Some, uh, what shit they got on my computer? I don't know. One of those little virus, virus protection joints. I'm good. Oh, you mean, like, like, like Norton? Yeah. yeah. Nice. yeah. Norton. Norton for your digital? Norton pack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god. Hey girl, you gotta download this Norton real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, son. I'm in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to think about it. I mean, it depends, man. I gotta go back through the, the banging female Digimons and see, but you know, somebody could there's probably one out there that could catch it. Yeah, I mean like, shorty. She was decent. Afterwards, she talking about oh I'm pregnant. No, you're gonna have to put that in the trash pile. Wow. wow. <laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> 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 I mean, there is some DNA digivolution. At least I can look like that. Oh, wow. You, you can't digi, DNA digivolve without my consent. <laughs> I'm good. That's crazy. Wow, y'all crazy. I'm just saying what everybody thinking, bro. That's cool. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you introduce the next topic of the, the fastest ability. All right, um, so <laughs> somebody posted this on the decent spot. Um, not sure who I want to say, Matt Tab. Shout out Matt Tab, just in case. No, I posted it. You did, yeah, and I shout you out. Shout out MGG, shit. He, hey. he did, you know, put some respect on them. You all here trying to get clout to everybody else. I feel you. <laughs> no, you, that, you know, that's just my secret little uh, B, B plot. You feel me. Wow. He stabilized the CEO, so you you know. <laughs> um, but but shout out MGG. Um, basically, which ability is fastest? Um, and we got between Nightcrawler's teleportation, Goku's instant transmission, the fourth Hokage's flying thunder god, and Barry Allen's speed force. Uh, he asked me to you know throw my my physics spin on it, um, which is which is what I did. Um, so I will give my opinion and then, you know, then y'all can, you know, kind of chime in on y'all's. Uh, so I don't know how y'all want me to do. You want me to just straight up sell the fastest or do you want me to go slowest to fastest? You can go slowest to fastest. All right. Build so, up the hype. Slowest. I definitely got to put Nightcrawler at slowest as Damn. he actually has to transport through a mini dimension. And let's assume here that we have some arbitrarily long distance that forget they what they power say they can do they all set up all they need to do is just like activate their power to go there um like let's just say it's to the moon or some shit okay um nightcrawler has to physically travel through an alternate dimension and he is the slowest um second i think i have to go with uh instant transmission and Man, the reason i go yeah, I think it's slower, and this is why. Um, so instant transmission. One, we see that there's like some visible like like little teleporty thing. Two, niggas have reacted on that, right? Like uh Frieza beating up that one um yard rat nigga, like niggas can act upon it. And then three, it requires like intense focus. And like, yeah, Goku be styling on niggas because Goku's the main character of the show and a and a prodigy genius at this so like yeah he'd be doing it in battle kind of quick but it's definitely something that requires focus uh, and, and niggas can actually outspeed it and, and beat you up in it like we've seen frieza do that so that's why i wanted to call that second slowest flying thunder guy we've never seen no nigga like niggas be like oh i'm a fraction of an inch from touching that nigga boop he gone like there ain't no animation there ain't no none of that like that nigga is in the other place true teleportation he is instantly there i've never even seen no animation like usually they just cut scene because that nigga just in another place you know like we've been seeing him fractions of seconds from dying and boop he's in another place you know and ain't no nigga ever been like yeah nigga i'm i'm i caught you you know what i'm saying um uh, and and yeah they got speed feats so I want to say that if, like, because in short distances, all these shits will seem the same. But if we increase it to something like the size of the moon, that moment where Goku etching away, the flying Thunder God is already on the on the moon. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's already there. And then Speed Force wins it for me because, like, Barry Allen is faster than light, um, which means, like, so this is two reasons why I say he wins. He's faster than light, which means the time it takes for your brain to send the signal for you to run or for you to teleport, Barry is already there. 
You know what I'm saying? Like you thought about moving and Barry is already on the move. Um, so that's one. Two, um, <clears throat> Barry can time travel. So you go there. Barry was there yesterday. Barry won. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> There are multiple ways where I'm like, bro, Barry could win. Barry could do a thousand things and then get there before you got there. Like, what was it? This dude reacted or thought at femtoseconds? Like, let's be real. Nothing in the physical universe can happen in femtoseconds. Barry can move before time can register that it exists. He is there before y'all even had the conversation to be there. It's ridiculous. Mm. That all sounds fair to me, to be honest. The only thing I would have... The only thing I could see is arguable, but I would have to look up would be the instant transmission um, versus the flying thunder god technique. I don't know. I mean, like based on how you described it, it makes sense because of how they animate it. And we like literally see Goku do stuff like in mid uh, instant transmission, which would make sense. But I feel like the actual ability itself, as far as like if we just had, um, you know, the um, DBZ Pedia on like what is every single technique and what the actual details or like what encompasses of that ability. I feel like it's supposed to be more instant than what they're showing. And it's just like an animation flaw, if you would, as far as like how they're truly representing the technique. So I, I would think that's that might be iffy, but at least based on the explanations that you gave, I'd pretty much be on the board on, on board with like the ranking system you have. Um, yeah, I would say for sure. I mean, like Barry Allen is definitely number one. Just like, I don't even think it's fair to put him on this list. Um, but with um, what is it? Instant transmission versus the fourth Okage shit. I forgot the name. But so we're just, we're just talking about trying to throw his kunai or him having to put a seal or anything. We're talking about if he already has a seal mm -hmm. in that place, right. then he does it. Um, Hmm. I could, I could, and I can, I can give them the Hokage the edge. The only thing with that is I, I've never seen, I don't think we've seen it at all of the Hokage doing like a super long distances, like there was one, with instant transmission. There was one scenario uh, when he was fighting the fourth tail, or no, the nine tail, and that shit was about Across to beat you bomb him and his bitch. That nigga teleported to their summer house, which is like I think in a different country. And like in a in a second, and teleported back. Like there was no time. Oh wait, pause. That was a different village. Like his house. It like, wasn't his house. Crib? If you remember, he didn't teleport to his house. He teleported to like a safe location that he had previously set up, and it wasn't in the village because he, he was like, "Yeah, you know, you should be safe here." I believe. You mean he teleported the blast? Uh, the the nine hills blast, or he mm -hmm. teleported? He teleported him and his his girl. Now I can't now fact check me on whether or not it was in the village, but I do know at the very least wherever the carnage was, wherever he teleported, you know, his wife and his kid, there was no like you couldn't even hear yeah. the the background explosion. So it was I mean, definitely the, far enough away. Yeah, at the bare minimum, you could say homie can cross like the whole village like in, in an instant, like at, at a minimum. Yeah, but. So. Goku and, and uh, Goku don't be doing traveling across the universe. You know, like, I don't know. That's true. I did some wiki looks while everybody was talking. So, the way I'll just, like, index with my thing. I think I more or less agree with the, the group. Uh, the way I thought about them might have been slightly different. I basically said if there was a finish line, in a sense, all the preparations have been done. So I didn't account the fact of the thinking part that goes into the instant transmission or building up the key. I just felt like that was already prepared. And basically, all the preconditions were met. You just moved to that location was basically the next step in all scenarios. What would Who would arrive first? So with that, I just didn't know where to put Flash necessarily. I heard the arguments in the comments of like, well, he can go through time. So technically, you get there before the blah, blah, blah. There... I, I don't have the context to argue too much the Flash argument, so I'll put it up there as number one. The What I'm reading on the wiki, though, is that um, the instantaneous thing with Goku stuff may be a little bit misleading by using the word instant. 
And the flying thunder god technique is actually instantaneous. So I think that would be faster. But I'll just read what it is here, and then you guys can take your own inter interpretations. But uh, the instant transmission requires a key signature to lock onto. Uh, Goku describes it as more complicated than traditional teleportation, but merging your energy into a certain area, demolecularizing it into all of your atoms and being transferred across the teleportation zone and reassembling in an area where the locked on signature reside, which to me sounds like it takes time. Yeah. <laughs> None mm -hmm. of that sounds instantaneous to me. Uh, now reading the flying thunder god technique in combat situations, a flying thunder god technique can most effectively be used by marking an opponent's body with the technique formula, allowing the user to teleport to them at any time. When the marked opponent tries to attack, the user can attack them first. When the marked opponent tries to escape, the user can instantly appear at their side. So since they use the word instantly, <laughs> I'm taking them at the word instantly, uh, meaning that I, at least I just Googled what how fast it, an instant is. 10,000 times the speed of light is what was given to me by Google. How accurate that is, I don't know. Player 5, you're the physics person, but I'm assuming I'm right. So, uh, okay. I, no, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, just... I would say this is that um, <laughs> there is a very specific amount of time. I can't give you all the zeros, but it's called like Planck time, which is the fastest occurrence that any thing can happen. Like nothing can actually happen outside of this amount of time. It's just too short. Um, same thing with this thing called a uh, Planck length, which is like nothing is smaller than this. Um, so there is a given physical limitation to when a, a, a thing can occur and Barry can think faster than that. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, at the end of the day, the reason why I put Barry over Flying Thunder God is because he actually has to think. Like electrons have to move in his brain for him to like use his jutsu. And while those electrons are moving, the flash can be on the moon. Like I'm there already, bro. Okay. I mean, I... I was just more arguing about the... I, I don't think this means it's faster than the Flash. I was talking more about the meaning of instant in terms of its yeah. relation to the speed of light. If I mean, we could say 10,000 10, times the speed of light. I feel like at a certain point of speed, it's irrelevant. Like, yeah, No, I'm saying that happen. because that's the perspective I'm putting on Goku's technique, which I think shows that it's clearly faster than Goku's technique. Mm -hmm. And then I, don't, I think we're all on the same page about Nightcrawler probably being the slowest. Though maybe with what we hear about Goku's technique, there may be an argument that his might be faster than Goku's. So oh, no. to be honest, based on what you just explained, it seems like Goku and Nightcrawler actually have a similar technique. Yeah. Or actually, they teleport the same way. And it may like look fast because Goku is fast, but he might be teleporting like the same way as Nightcrawler. Just instead of a puff of smoke, it's a digitization of lines. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, they might be doing the exact same thing. So, who knows? Nightcrawler and Goku might have the same speed on that. Yeah. So, I mean, based off this, I think we all have the general consensus that it's speed force at the top, uh, flying Thunder God technique second, instant transmission, and Banff either tied or slightly, one slightly now, over the other. I want to throw this out here. If, in theory, if in theory you could find an amount of space so immense so ridiculously impassable that even at Barry's maximum speed of faster than time, it would still require him some time to pass. Like, yo, we have an infinite amount of space to travel. Then in that case, I would say that Flying Thunder God is the fastest as it is an instantaneous transportation. But for any realistic, physically defined three-dimensional set of space, if you can move faster than time, you'd... You get there first. <laughs> yeah. I got it. Yeah, the only thing is that because Barry is something, speed force is something different than just teleporting. So that's why it's not even fair for him to be against these actual teleportation guys. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think their Bring powers are space-based and his is time-based and it's just not a fair comparison. So um, I will go with I mean, let's break it down now so I could just pull out all my evidence. Um, <laughs> a lot of motherfuckers have been talking a lot of shit because I posted this um, Genning team, the ultimate Genning team. And the people I listed was Sasuke, Neji, and Shino. 
And because people love to ride Shikmar's dick, I'm not saying Shikmar's not a cold character and doesn't deserve some respect. But because fans love to do that, they there's a lot of hate going on in the comments talking about remove Shino and mm-hmm. put Shikamaru. Now, I think the source of this hate is coming from the fact that where we see them end game and the hype moments we got from Shikamaru versus Shino. But I wanted to break it down to whatever facts I had to show that I think at this point in time, uh, at first my argument was just up to round two. So this was before the final round of the tuning exams that I think Shino was better than Shikamaru all around. But based off what I saw versus the sound five or sound four, sorry, in the Sasuke retrieval arc, I want to argue that up until that point, Shino was still better than Shikamaru. So um, basically this introduces the topic of Shino versus Shikamaru um, mm-hmm. in the tuning exam sections. Uh, we're breaking in it. We're breaking it down three ways: one versus one, team wise and strategy. Um, I think because I'm already kind of there, I'm gonna start with the one v one, and then we can all talk about that. Then we'll go to the other parts. Uh, for one v one, I'm taking Shino. Probably if we're talking ten out of ten. I think I will argue nine to eight out of ten fights. My reasoning pre tuning exams is coming from the fact that. I think Shino pull out way, way more strats and his ability is more applicable to more situations than Shikamaru. Plus, I think versus Shikamaru, he is a hard counter in any situation. Um, even if you lock him into any sort of shadow possessing jutsu, he always has the backup of the bugs, which as far as I know, uh, Shikamaru can't possess. Plus, I think there's a limit on how many of those things he can es- escape anyway. So even if he could possess the bugs, there's no way he's getting all of them. So I think he's definitely losing on a chakra point there. Now, post um, tuning exams, my argument that could be countered uh, is basically going off of other fights. So when we when Shikamaru fought the Sound Four Chick, one he didn't really win that fight. It got to a stalemate, and he would have lost if uh, Tamari didn't come and save him. Two, she was the second weakest. Uh, I'm sorry, she was the second strongest of the sound four, according to what I read on the wiki, first being Sakon and the twins. Mm-hmm. Um, I bring this up because the second point is that Sakon and Ukon were beaten by Kankuro, who fought Shino to a stalemate pre that fight. So <laughs> if we argue by proxy, Shino took down someone who took down somebody stronger than a person Shikamaru was going to lose to, to a stalemate, and won. Like, I guess it was a tie. They both, he got him with poison gas, Shino got him with the bug. They both lost their chakra KO um, versus Shikamaru at that time who stratted his way, a very good strat, getting close to the dub with this girl, but basically stalemated it until he was able to get help by another sound ninja to win that fight. So... Based off of what I saw in that, not going in a, not making this like a page long thesis, I think that even post um, the tuning exams, Shino would still take that dub. Maybe a little bit less, but I don't think Shikamaru's growth was that great posted either. We just see more moves from him. So I still think it's probably going to be a strong 8 out of 10, in my opinion. Um, and that's it. That's my evidence. I'm out. Right, I'm going to <laughs> piggyback onto that. By saying even mm-hmm. post uh, time skip and Shippuden, um, we get to see Shino like once, and he used like this global bug sphere jutsu that is like why I always and I get it. It was literally only one page in some obscure chapter, but back then I remembered it and it went hard because that jutsu go hard. He like envelop you in a globe of swirling bugs that eat your chakra and suck your blood till you dead. Like that nigga Cole. I don't know how she Shikamaru getting out of that post time skip. Uh, he dropped that on Shikamaru. What that nigga doing? Like shadow shadow possession them bugs. That's dead. Like that nigga just dead. Like, I see is like honestly a nine out of ten, and the only reason, only reason Shikamaru getting one. Is because, like y'all, I too am a Shikamaru fanboy. Exactly, that's it. <laughs> and so I put respect on that nigga name. He gonna I just get one. Pull out one. That's yeah. it. That's really it. Um. All right. If we talking tuning exams, I honestly would give Shino ten out of ten. 
Oof. for the simple reason that we've already talked about. There's too many bugs. I would feel that all Sheena would have to do at the start of the match would be all my bugs get Shikamaru. And he would truly have no counter from what we've seen of the capability of Shikamaru. So I, I just don't see it. And then if you want to say, oh, he gets one lucky dodge. Okay, Shino still got strats. So he does the one lucky dodge. He, Shino comes in, gets like a slight hit. Well, you know he only still got bugs on him, even though he said all bugs get him. Shino ain't stupid. He still got at least five in the pocket. Oh. Boom. Get like two or three on the homie after that close range coming in. It's already a wrap. I got so I would thing. honestly give Shino 10 out of 10. I just I just don't see any dub Shikamaru getting. I, I got <laughs> one thing to say to you. Shikamaru hater for this 10 out of 10. <laughs> Kunai Parachute. Oh my God. What's up? Kunai Parachute. Parachute? Give my what nigga one, mean? bro. Kunai <laughs> Parachute, bro. Again, <laughs> the, the quantity is too massive. Homie can have an army going up against Shino and then for kicks be like, you know what? F your parachute. Couple yeah. buzz go knock out the parachute. Like, what? That's what Tamari thought too. Kunai Parachute. He getting one. Yeah. He getting <laughs> one. No, one thing I also want to add, I didn't get to bring it up in my example, is uh, Shino does have the hands, contrary to popular belief. Mm. Uh, he's, I think in his battle in the tuning exams, he knocked dude out in like one punch. Um, so far, like I, I would argue that in close range combat, Shino is taking the dub over Shikamaru. I don't think we've seen anything notable from Shikamaru as far as close range combat goes to say he would beat Shino. Mm. If they were uh, just throwing hands, just putting that out there. Right. No, I mean, like, I I, I would definitely agree. Um, and then, like, plus, I mean, like I said, with Shino throwing hands, in my opinion, you can't get hit by Shino because Homie has a bug on him that when you do get hit, that bug is all it needs to get the dub in the first place. So <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> Um, so pre tuning exams, I'm actually still all for the 10 for Shino, zero for Shikamaru. However, post tuning exams, I'm actually willing to give Shikamaru two dubs for the simple reason of the shadow stitching jutsu. As soon as you found out that Shikamaru can actually use his shadows to actually like touch like physical, um, inanimate objects and even stab people, I think Which that scenario is, is this real quick. Oh, wait, what? Which scenario is this you're, you're talking about? No, I mean, I'm just talking about in general. He started no, you say what time period is that? A decent amount after the What shooting. time period did Are we Are you still going one on Shuni one on one? What? Oh, yeah, like, but what you're you talking like, about one. I mean, like, it sounds like it sounds like we were comparing like verses as far as like uh, like the two characters, like pre and post shooting exams. Or am I wrong? Yeah, so I'm saying which one are you on? Are you on post right now? I'm talking about post. Uh, I was saying, like, like in the tuning exams and pre-tuning exams, I gave Shino 10 wins, Shikamaru 0 wins. Post-tuning exams, like in Shippuden, I would give Shikamaru 2 wins. So I guess um, Shino 8 out of 10 for that fight, then, if you have to put it another way. Because the Shadow Stitching Jutsu can definitely use with um, Shikamaru's strats to try and, you know, get, like, a, a Shadow win to just stab him or throw a kunai from a different kind of angle that Shino just wouldn't be able to predict. That I can actually see. Um, but again, I mean, she knows... What's the shadow like, stitching jutsu? What's that? The uh, shadow stitching jutsu. It's pretty yeah, much what, just what, like what using he, his shadows doing? to like physically do-ish instead of just possessing. Like shadow spikes and like... Right. It's kind of how he beat you, Don. Uh, so yeah. don't even have that. Shit, okay. Let's go, Shigamaru. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. So, but I mean, like, you still got, you know, the massive amount of Shino bugs, and you, then you still definitely got um, uh, more versatility uh, with his bugs, which is experience. So, I mean, I'm still giving it mostly to Shino, but I definitely see Shikamaru with some dubs there. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for 1v1. Wow. Um, wait, yeah, you are. Um, all right. So, honestly, for. Tuning exams, it's for me, it's kind of weird because I think it really depends. Are we assuming they're fighting in the tuning exams arena? Yeah, okay, because I feel outdoors like that gives Shikamaru like way more chances to do shit with, with his brain. But I would actually, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Shino would go 10 out of 10, but like, like you said, just because of Shikamaru, I feel I should give him at least the respect. one. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna say nine and a half. Then I'm gonna split it. There we go. Wow, nine and a half off Kunai parachute. bro. He'll get a Shino to win and then admit that he lost. Kind of thing. Yeah, so you know, you gonna you gonna figure something out. But I mean, it's just it's just weird because like shooting exams, Shigamaru, he doesn't even really have any way to attack you. Um, besides, yeah, he doesn't actually. He doesn't have the what was it called again, Dragon? What, what was that? Wait, say again. Shadow what, what was that? A, that the, oh, yeah, the shadow, shadow stitching, juice shadow juice stitching like, or whatever. Well, we he doesn't have yeah, that. Only didn't see, yeah, we didn't see that until afterwards. Yeah, so he can't really attack you anyway. Even the way he beat that girl was he had to make a hit her head on the wall or something like that. Yeah. Shit like that isn't going to work against Shino. Um, so that's why I, I, don't, I don't really see him doing much against Shino. I, I never thought Shikamaru was a good one-on-one fighter anyway um, because that's he just doesn't have the, the, the moves that to, to fight people. Um, especially if it's in, like you said, in the children exam arena where he doesn't have time to pre-plan or there isn't. Oh, here we go. The Batman Gambit. No, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's literally what it is, though. Hey, that's the only reason he beat. Prep time. Hey, only reason Batman he beat, um, versus that God with prep time. Over with, bro. But, um, yeah, so I'd say nine and a half goes to Shino. And then post Shunin, uh, I still think Shino would win most of the time. But, like, uh, well, actually, I'm gonna go five and five because mm. up uh, till when though? Like, at what point are you considering post? Because to me, I was considering post post tuning pre shippuden, but uh, player five brought in like he he added the shippuden piece to a degree. Yeah, that, that's kind of so, what I was thinking too. I was thinking, I, I mean, I think that towards the end, Shikamaru probably would win. I but, was just putting that in there because, like, obviously, this is just like. A Ginning team, which yeah. means technically you can't do post tuning exam because post tuning Shikamaru gets buffed up to tuning. But right. so that's why I was just adding in, like you know, because I figure we we adding some strats. Like if you're talking about the Tuyuya fight, yeah, technically Shikamaru's a tuning. So if we can right. get some tuning strats off Shikamaru. You feel me? Like you know, I was just throwing that in there. My boy Shino got one panel to show off, and that shit was stronger than anything I seen Shikamaru do. Yeah. So I mean, I would just, add, but I mean, you you define yeah, so a clear what, stopping point. That's what I was saying. So I was saying, yeah, so like, if he's going five out of five, are you talking like end series Naruto? Or are you talking halfway through the the tuning no, exam? Because I think like there's a point they, um, where it flips. I'm not even talking tuning exams yet. I mean, not um, not shipping in yet. I'm talking oh, about okay. like when they were fighting. Stop giving sound. Season, essentially. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's five out of five. Woof. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yep. Let's hear the reasoning behind that one. <laughs> um, because at that point, um, Shikamaru has a way to actually attack him. Um, that alone should bump it, just drop it from nine and a half to maybe at least seven and a half. And then, as long as we are not in the confined space of the what's the call of the tuning exams arena, I mm -hmm. feel like, and I, I guess y'all saying Shino has strats, but it's it's it's. It's a fact that it's not on the level of Shikamaru. I mean, that's that's just what it is. And so I what feel like point he can pull was out... it a fact? <laughs> uh, I gotta ask. I, I think From the only one. fact we got on it is Asuma put hype on that. Like and Asuma what, was like, one. "Yo, this nigga IQ two hundred, and he was talking to Shino Sensei, and she ain't go well. Shit, she knows shit three hundred. Like she. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna take that as the only fact we got on it. And this like, is so like, to me, that's that's essentially saying that um, Rock Lee doesn't have the best, or God doesn't have the best Taijutsu jutsu just because they didn't specifically say it. When um, be, uh, when I in the what's it called? The no, no, I, I, to me it is. I'm just saying. I'm giving you my point of view. In uh -huh. the in Shippuden, when Naruto just came back, and Sasuke and and not Sasuke, Naruto and Shasaka were fighting Kakashi, and they was comparing all of his stats to 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 everyone else. They they went down the line. His Taijutsu is as good as his Lee, as like Leo guys. That means it's A1. His Genjutsu is as good as like Sasuke's. His strats and, and just intellect, whatever, is as good as Shikamaru's. They didn't mention anything about Shino. To me, it's how the story portrays Shikamaru is clear that he has better strats than Shik and Shino. And that's not saying Shino is shitty. That's just saying that Shikamaru is Shikamaru. His dad was that nigga for a reason. That his entire, that's his blood. I, I don't know if it's a, so it might be a Kaka Genkai for all we know, but <laughs> it's clear. It's, 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 and it's crazy for you to even like argue against it. 
that is clear that Shino has like a level of stress that's above anyone else in the I, entire village. I can only agree with that post uh chip like in Chipwooden. Like I feel like what I saw in the tuning exam time period, um, you can't say that you can't definitively say Shikumaru has more stress than Shino at that particular time period. I we've seen almost the same amount of fights from both. And I think the level of stress executed by both is equally the same. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. And I, I would like to say I think we've officially transitioned to the strategy category. Sure. Um, I would like to say that I'm in the middle because I see what uh, what Deuce is saying, right? Like that by all accounts in story, mm-hmm. he's the best. But that's kind of like that whole thing with the third Hokage, right? By all accounts in story, the third Hokage should be the strongest Kage. But from what we see, most niggas will put the third Hokage towards the bottom of their list, right? So that's why I kind of bring up this whole thing where I'm like, mm, I get what dude saying. Technically, niggas got clout on this nigga Shikamaru. But we seen through multiple ninjas that clout don't mean shit. Sometimes. So, like, this nigga Shino, from what we've seen in the tuning exam, he he solo carried his his ch- ass team to the second fastest victory behind Gara, which mm-hmm. is crazy, in the fucking uh, Force of Death. The nigga had multiple strats to bang a sound ninja, a sound ninja that was, like, able to, like, body Lee and Sakura. Like, yeah, I don't know. Right. My nigga show he got strats. That's what I'm saying. Again, I'm not saying he doesn't. So, he, so when you're saying the third Okage thing, um, that's just like niggas. That's a, that's people talking, right? That's like um, people of, of the third Okage's time is hyping him up. But portrayal wise, he is not portrayed to be the strongest Okage. Like, I, like, I mean, he, all I'm saying is portrayal wise, though. Like pre Shippuden, once again, I keep qualifying with pre Shippuden. Where did we see a clear distinction between the level of stress Shino? did and Shikamaru did. And I'm not just talking about people calling it out that he's smarter. I'm saying, like, period. We've seen multiple of their fights. I think maybe you just forget in the Shino fights, but based off what Player 5 was saying, of, of stuff that was, like, subtly hinted and also the stuff that was clear in fights, I don't see how you can say Shikamaru was clearly, like, and I'm talking about, because it sounds like you're saying leagues above. If anything, they were tied to very close at this point in time. Post, we saw nothing from Shino, so all I have to do is go off of what I saw from Shikamaru, and this is why I, I can give him the, the clear dub. But pre so I should put that, I, would, I don't see where that statement is coming from. That's all I'm saying. So I would just say that yeah, okay, we haven't seen much from Shino post, like in shipping it at all. But even if we did, like if we did, I like the the point of where where Shikamaru is, where like where he got to. That alone tells us that's that is what that is his job. He's a strategist. I mean, like for the village. Yeah. That is literally like his. But I'm not his, arguing his, that part. I'm arguing pre shipwood and that's the point I'm trying to get you to make clear to me because you're saying I can't argue that, but I can argue it pre shipwood and uh, post shipwood and I can't. I don't, no, I don't think nothing you're okay. I don't think there's a difference pre ship pre shipwood. I don't think there's any difference. You don't just think because got smarter. I think they both got smarter, but I, I'm saying that the. The amount, the percentage of that they got smarter, I don't think that... I think Shikamaru was always smarter than him. It was always so you more think you're tied in strats pre-Shippuden? No, I think Shikamaru was better than him pre-Shippuden. Wow, okay. Like yeah. I said, all I'm saying is where's the clear line there that you're saying exists? I'm, you can believe See, whatever think you want. Um, you're saying there's a clear line. There's, there's, there's no, like this is all, this is clear all line is Shippuden. That from, from what I'm understanding. He's pretty much saying the distinction was made in Shippuden of how much smarter Shikamaru was. Exactly. Then yeah. Shino, and since that intellect gap between the two characters technically hasn't changed from pre Shippuden to Shippuden, then you yeah, can use that as thank you very much for, uh, articulating See, that, that's how I'm interpreting the argument. <laughs> okay, all right. When you put it because, that way, I can see why you're saying that. Sure. Because even then, if they both win fights, sure. That, like how you say, I, I, there's nothing for me to prove that Shikamaru like gets the edge. There's nothing to prove that Shino does either. Like, they both win fights off, off strats. It wasn't against each other. So it, there's no way that we can even clarify, like, clearly state that one person is better than the other. They didn't fight the same person. They didn't fight each other. They're, this is all speculation. So the only thing that we have, like, we can kind of firmly say that Shikamaru is better is in Shippuden, where it's clear that 
for, for whatever reason, he surpassed Shino in, in strats. And and one on one fight may still be different, but strat wise, yeah. it's you have to give it to Shino. I mean, love Shino, Shikamaru. It's hard for me to uh, uh, to argue against it because it's the only data we have. But at the same time, like we're making an assumption, an interpolation of this graph that is linear, and it could not be right. The, it, Chino's growth could have been exponential for all we know. So, uh, I mean, but I ain't got no evidence to argue otherwise. All I can say is, like, I guess they hold my nigga Chino. I guess. Um, so we, we're good. So we just go ahead. We can move to like team wise. Like, so I guess the team wise argument was like, all right, between Shino and Shikamaru. So we say Shino gets the edge in 1v1. Shikamaru gets the edge in strategy. But now to the team wise, um, I, because I'm the Shino stand here, I got to go with Shino. I think that to a team. Well, before, um, we, before we start, are we talking about their they're getting teams. Or no, we no, no, no. If we put they, them on a team with the same people, a team with better. Sasuke and Neji, because Sasuke and Neji are the clear cut other two members. There's no like debate on them. So the team okay. that they come into is Sasuke and Neji. Okay. Um. So with that being said, I think that in a team of Sasuke and Neji, the strats would not be super beneficial as as much as uh, uh your ability to be a, a long range fighter. And to support them two niggas, uh, I think that the only bonus that Shikamaru really brings is the ability to hard crowd control. Like, yo, I can stop this nigga in his tracks. But I'm like, uh, I got the two fastest getting on my side. I don't need no nigga to be not moving, if we being real. Like, I we know he's an expert tracker. Evidence of, or Shino is an expert tracker. Evidence of that is uh, him... Um, Basically, getting his team, which was compiled of fucking Hinata and and dog nigga, the two garbages niggas, he was able to lead them to the second place finish in the Forest of Death behind Gara, who broke a record. You know what I'm saying? So Shino was going hard in the manga. I don't know if y'all was reading, but at that time I was still reading the manga before the anime came out. Shino didn't just drain them niggas' chakra; he murdered everybody. That nigga a killer. <laughs> so if Sasuke and Neji like, bro, we gotta drop bodies. Shino just gonna nod. He ain't saying shit. Niggas dead. They came across the carnage that nigga Shino put down, and niggas was disgusted. Right? Like Ooh. Shino will kill a nigga. Um, yeah, like I said, he's excellent at tracking, excellent at intel, excellent at um long range fighting. I think he's the perfect team for a largely close range Sasuke and Neji. I think he fits best. Um, I mean, I would just pretty much second that, and uh, I would think going against either or, pretty much Shikumaru is like a trump card with strats. Like you said, I don't think the strats are as important with that team. They're bodying most niggas, and if they're going against each other, I think at that time period, she knows whatever strats were still comparable enough that Shikumaru can't just easily get dubs on them. They're not going to walk around just being totally foolish. So I think he's still counter enough there. Plus, he's an actual asset in terms of his ability. I find it hard to believe that without um, some intervention from Sasuke and Neji actually like coordinated it so Shikamaru can use his power, it's going to be hard for him to just get it off all the time in the way Shino can in his battles. But more or less, player five, you summed up my thought on it. I think team-wise, I would give it to Shino. Um... I think, pause, uh, when we say team wise, are we saying in every aspect in the sense of like getting team, tuning team, joining team? Uh, I think it'd be a bit much to try and extrapolate that because yeah. we still not in the clear on how powerful Neji was. I would be somebody to argue that he was up there with Kakashi. There are other people that will look at me like I'm goofy. So like, I yeah. say we keep it at j- getting level. If, yeah, we're keeping it, if we're te- keeping it getting level, then I think the only plus that Shikamaru would have over Neji would simply be his strats. But I would say his strats would be pointless 
in a getting team for the simple reason that you don't go for the gettings for the strats in the first place. You go for the joning leader of the squad. So, aka, the team is more there for the bodies slash abilities, which he, which you know has that in spades. Considering no matter what kind of mission the team would be on, Shino would be a valuable asset for any kind of objective. Whereas Shikamaru would just be the best he could really be would be like um, a backup plan slash um, contingency expert. But with the kind of missions they would be on, that's pretty much pointless. So in that kind of uh, scenario, I would pick Shino every time. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, with this. Well, again, it pains me, but I, I mean, I would pick Shino every time. <laughs> just, I mean, just because even the people that we put them with, like you guys talked about it, it's like there's there's no need for a strategist. Neji and and um, Sasuke are probably like the upper echelon of, of strategists anyway, in at least out of those Genin, I would That's say. Um, so again, there's not really a need for them, and that and those they're, they're overpowered to the point where, like. The strats didn't even come in that to point to play because they they're they're that overpowered. I assume they're fighting against other Ganyans, so I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. I would say with she, you know, Shikamaru might have a better chance if it was if it was more average teammates because I think that's where sh- like strategies may make more of a difference because if your if your teammates aren't the top three Ganyan, then you actually got to think you got to strategize. So if it was ten ten, maybe. They would still lose, but they would do a pretty a better job with Sh- Shikamaru than with Shino, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't even see how I can give it to Shikamaru, so Shino has to take it. A side note: I just was thinking about as we were talking about this, like, what if we replace this Guinea team with the other Guinea missions that we've seen Team Seven go on? Like, imagine Sasuke, Neji, and Shino versus like. Uh, Zabuza and Haku. Yeah, Zabuza Haku. Like, I don't think Zabuza going home that day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, at all, bro. It's uh, <laughs> it's he like, damn, these niggas is coming with some heat. The leaf done changed, bro. Maybe we should stop <laughs> killing all our people in day tuning exam. Like, that nigga Neji would be like, yo, there's a fucking little girl. Actually, no, that's a boy <laughs> watching us in the trees right now. <laughs> and she know what about all right, bro. I'm on it. Rotation. Haku would have murked all them niggas. Ah. Uh, I think the rotation is hard, bro. The rotation? And then, okay, let's put it this way. If Haku wanted them dead, yes, they're dead. I agree with you. But if Haku was playing the same game she was playing with Naruto and them, Haku would have been asleep because Byakugan would have been like, all right, this motherfucker not hiding. It's a little girl sitting in the tree back there. And then you can send the (laughs) bugs to literally crawl up there. So by the time she's ready to jump off, she's like, whoa, shit, I'm out of chakra. That's just fall <laughs> yeah, I know good and well she know the type of person that got sentry bugs following him around like a few feet, feet out, just making sure niggas ain't following them. And if so, he not, they got Kakashi. Kakashi would have been right. like, hey, bro, peep this right. strat. Have your bugs lingering behind. Oh, <laughs> right? oh okay, never mind. We, we still talking about well, Kakashi still there and everything. Oh, yeah. 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 I, mean, like, I think they're, yeah, plus I think the Haku fight now becomes the team fight instead of a uh, Naruto op fight. And right. them as a team versus Haku, right. even if she can't beat, if she can easily beat the 1v1, but versus that team, no way she's coming out with a dub. Yeah, because like no. you replaced Sakura, who was useless. Yeah, um. exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I want to throw this one last thing out on the Haku bit. Let us not forget that Kid Jesus himself talked no jutsu Haku out of being a murder bot. So if he not there to talk her out of be like, you know what? I got to kill these niggas. Haku definitely <laughs> dropping all them niggas instantly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, I, I'm get, sorry. He had to kill these like win, bro. That's just yeah. hilarious. Wow. No, uh, Haku was a, was a, was a Joni anyway. Shit. Yeah, Haku was admittedly stronger than Kakashi. He was like, all right, mm-hmm. let me buy these niggas. Hey, bro, this is what it is. Um, so, uh, I think other than that, maybe... For the effort of time, we'll probably just skip the raking and Naruto Kage's, and we'll close out the anime segment with most toxic thing you've heard from a fan base. Hmm. Uh, anybody want to start? Because I already got mine. I got a list of things. It's hard to pick just one, so mine might be an amalgamation of of weird things, but I might 
I'll just do it. Uh, so my okay. thing is just, <laughs> I, I'm not going to say a particular phrase, but I think it came out in this Shikamaru thing too, but it's a very common thing in the anime community. This, a person is a goat because I like that one fight he had. Comedy. Mm, yeah. Like a lot of people love to ride certain characters and like Shikamaru is a light example because he still kind of deserved the respect he got, but a lot of characters get overhyped in the world off of fights that we think are dope and not because of what they actually accomplished in the series. And it creates a whole toxic thing because the community just likes to shut down any counter argument you have for that person without actually looking that they don't have the shit yeah. behind them. Like the, the stilo isn't there. None of the facts are there that they're saying. You just like that one fight. And I, I can go on and on. 150%. <laughs> yeah, I can go on and on with the list of characters people like to use, uh, but they're there. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of salty. I ain't thinking that one. Thank you for thinking of it. Yeah, that should be annoying. Niggas be goating bullshit. Right. Like, oh, this nigga to go. What do he do? He won that one fight. Yep. The fuck out That's of here. it. <laughs> uh, I'm like the the only nigga I go for that with is Choji because he bagged him a black girl at the end. <laughs> I, I'm goating him for that. It can't nobody tell me <laughs> shit. Hey, that fight was still hard though. But I never. But you see how Choji never come up in no Naruto versus because we still know where to place that nigga. It's like you had a hard fight, bro. But that shit ain't working on the rest of the niggas. Right? <laughs> it's working on big, swole, dumb nigga that you used it on. But anybody was smart to, oh, okay, he's super strong and fast. Cool. Bye. <laughs> like, right. Hide on the nigga. Right. Um, I think my um uh, my fan base thing that I gotta say, and this came up because. You know, people been telling me to watch JoJo's. I finally watch it, oh. and, and and it's the the over hyping of JoJo strats, and 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 it's not just MGG. Before people start saying this a ploy for me to come at the CEO, no, <laughs> it's it, it's a lot of people in the community, and like I'd have run across JoJo's fans. I think I first heard about JoJo's in like 2012, maybe. And I've been hearing this since 2012. It's goaded. It's this. The, the strat's crazy. Then I get on. I watch two, two and a half seasons. And I'm like, bro, I don't see these as strats. I see these as like MacGyver bullshits. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't. I refuse to accept it as a strat. And then niggas will go JoJo's. And I don't think it's that great of an anime. Mm. Niggas get toxic with JoJo's. They think that shit the best. It's, it's it's up there, but Wolf. not for the same reason. <laughs> Prime it's example. That shit not out there, bro. It's not even top ten. What? That's crazy. Mm. That's yeah. crazy. That's all I can say. It's crazy. But um <laughs> it's hey bro, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I might sit here and say JoJo's is the best thing I've ever seen. No. Is it good? Yes. Top fifty for sure. Top 10, it depends on the person. Because some niggas got fairy tale in their top 10, bro. It really depends on what you like. But for me, I'm, I've always been... A, you don't believe in strats, but I've always been a sucker for strats. So that, at least in terms of like animes that I consider strati, that's definitely in the top 10 for me. Overall, I don't know. But strati ones that I've read, like with the Death Notes and the Hunter x Hunters and all that, JoJo's is top 10 for me. But... To each his own, my guy. <laughs> I feel like you are going to love No Game, No Life if you haven't watched it. Cause like, I'm getting a raw to it. It'd be that type of strategy, like No Game, No Life, where it's like, bro, how did you pull that out? Because I'm cold, nigga. That's how. Like, that's, that's that not a strat, dope, right? It's true, though. <laughs> like, you're that's going to love works. that. That's mm -hmm. like saying yeah. Yuki Moto got strats. See, but like, my, like once again, I still feel like you putting it all on a particular season of JoJo's and not I all of JoJo's. The first two. I think so. You don't think Joseph had actual strats? Now, don't his, get me wrong. I did watch it as a background anime. Mm, so, um, mm. so you know, there's that. I will, you know, acknowledge that I could have been missing key elements, but mm, I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes they will have strategies. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the earlier seasons. 
Um, they would have some like some strats where it's like, yo, this makes sense. It was predetermined. This is within the character's already established abilities. But there is flooded with a lot of time, and it just gets worse as the seasons go on, where they start doing these like Matt Guyver put a paper clip and two strings together. Now it's a rail gun type bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, where that come from, bro? Hey, bro, it came from the power of the Joe Star bloodline. <laughs> I feel like when I watched it, bro, I felt like JoJo's was a parody of Hunter Hunter. But like where Hunter Hunter establishes where the bullshit come from, they was just like, nah, nigga, it's my quirk. <laughs> hey, bro, that's what the stands did for the series, man. That I would say if you if you arguing that, then I can agree with you. Like the stands definitely fucked up the where the strats come from this of stuff because, like I said, whenever time, whenever. He has to keep turning it up to one the further he gets to the series and every time they fight someone. So the strats to beat the person who can stop time is only going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so I, I don't disagree with you there, but I, I just can't believe that Joseph didn't have strats or even uh, the original Joe star, whatever his name was, Jonathan. Yeah. I think he had decent strats too. I think the season was lame. But him versus Dio, I don't think anything he pulled out there I considered an ass pull. Mm-hmm. They just use the environment to their advantage. The thing is, the ass pull comes in the environment sometimes. <laughs> like, why is that <laughs> icing right there in that room? That yeah, for sure, ass pull. Okay. Uh, uh, anybody else toxic fan base? Um, I honestly don't have a ton of experience, but I'm not gonna lie. It's just, Bless your heart. It's just it's just annoying to hear it though sometimes. But you mentioned it uh, today, so I think I'm gonna bring it up. Um, the can he beat Batman with prep time though? <laughs> oh, that's the that worst. Be the funniest one ever. I, I use that to troll, and some people use that as serious, like. I mean, it's pretty much, I mean, low key, it's pretty much like the equivalent of Kenny beat Goku. The, the anime version of that is Itachi with prep time, bro. Like, oh, yeah. oh my God, it's the worst. No, Niggas in really my, do, Itachi will bop any nigga in Naruto. In my early days of fandom, I can't even lie to you, I was susceptible to that thinking. But as you, like, grow, <laughs> you start to see how toxic it is because it's like the. At, in some cases, it makes sense. Okay, sure, if he has prep times, there are a few people that it does change the game for. But there's certain things it's like, no, it doesn't matter how much prep time he has. <laughs> it's stated in the show he's trash or he's not this. Like, it's not going to happen. But I, I totally agree. That shit is horrible. I mean, there's just got to be some limitations on it. But, I mean, like, Batman with prep time is, like, literal Jesus at points. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, it's this so is, uh, fun. Batman versus God with prep time. Who's winning, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, people uh, another, really got to stop and think about it. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, another uh, fan base that's just toxic for me. Uh, and I wouldn't call it toxic because that implies things. Just something I wish niggas would get away from is the anti action only anime niggas. Mm. Like, I'm just like, bro, like, action anime might be like mm, 30% of all anime that exists. It's some hard shit out there, whether you just in it for the strats, whether you in it for the the romance, the sports. It's anime out there where niggas ain't boxing that's cold as fuck. That's See, true. and that's, that's kind of related to mine. So it's it's the um, people that just that anime that has the pretty fights. The fights are animated very well. Um, mm. And people just think that's the greatest thing ever just because mm. it has some, some flashy fights, it's colorful looking fights. To me, that's equivalent to the video game saying of like picking these games as the GOAT because the story was good. <laughs> like, that doesn't say anything about the gameplay. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, the story's dope, but that doesn't make it a great game. Like, yeah. there's way yeah, more. And to that, it. So it's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> it makes it an anime version of that. The story could be shitty, but yeah. you got a couple of nice little fights. And... That's what God of High School did. And, 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 <laughs> and fucking <laughs> Demon Slayer. That's like. Right. Bro, I feel like with anime, it's like rap. Like, a cold beat can make your song hard, but you can't go around goating niggas with nothing but cold beats. Yeah. Like, yo, the beat was so hard. This is the hardest rapper ever. Like, no. 
The animation, that's why I tell people about Black Clover. You will have fun watching the fights. It is fun. <laughs> but it's definitely and the same like, thing with, with music. Like you can have like you can be barring niggas to death, but your song can still be trash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I got a question for y'all. Jay-Z versus the Beagles. Who's who's <laughs> Hey, Jay-Z got prep time. Migos fresh off a, a tour, bro. Oh, boy. <laughs> bro, like, yo, yo. Jay-Z when, prep when... time. Is he no fresh off, time, is no, he, is he fresh off uh, d- uh, dumping a bitch? Because, the, bro, oh, the, no. the, the, the club beat's about to go hard after this latest breakup. Hey, Believe that. Bro, man, like. Don't no forget the ad libs. Some niggas got ad libs, bro. Off the dome. Yeah. Mama. Like, how you turn mama into an ad lib? That shit's ad lib. <laughs> well, who's making the more fire song, though? I got to go with Migos. Because this is right. what I'm going to say. Yo, Migos, they really make songs that, like, you know it's not no lyrical hit. But yeah. it's, it's a club banger. Everybody playing it from your grandma to, to your little cousin. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jay-Z... Is really dependent on the niggas around him building. The last Cole Jay Z album to me had a couple decent songs, right? But then, like, his best album is that to me that collab with Kanye. And I gotta put most of that on Kanye as being like a, a musical genius in yeah. some ways, you know? Well, like, mm hmm. Uh, Jay Z not just about to drop no fire. Like, he ain't, he ain't that type of nigga. Like, yeah. the Migos could be like, all right, y'all, let's drop a club banger right now, today. <laughs> and that bitch coming out hot, niggas in the club, right. mama. <laughs> God damn, bro. <laughs> Cheers, well, um, you know, I, I got no comment. I don't even want to get. Into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, with that, uh, anything else? On the toxic, any other toxic ones you might want to just throw out there just to 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 get it out there off our chest. Bakugo fans are equivalent to NBA young boy fans. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh you definitely Bakugo fans are the type of niggas that like watch that nigga Bakugo go off and then just go and punch their granny. Like, yeah, you see that shit? Yeah. <laughs> My nigga Baku go in this bitch. Like, all right, bro. Uh, I I get bothered by people who refuse to uh, admit that nostalgia influences their opinions of things, mm. uh, especially when it comes to like versus arguments or like they're not willing to. And this is more in the Shoney community because versus are a big thing in that one, but in the Shoney community. We're so scared to, like, because we just did it with Shikamaru. We're so scared to say someone can fully take an L because we know in our mind it disrespects them. I feel like the reason why they are so adamant to Goku not taking L's before all this super stuff that made him goaded again um, was the fact that they felt like they're disrespecting their childhood by letting any nigga beat him, even if it makes sense. So uh, I... I, I don't know. That had always bothered me about the community because I like the fact that we're able to take different series and try to compare characters and even try to make it so even par- characters that are a little bit to compare can be compared. But those types of fan bases or peop- or fans that think that way almost always ruin the healthy discussion I feel like comes out of that. Yeah. I agree. And uh, I guess kind of to ex- extrapolate on that idea and is like, um, and I think this is kind of an issue with people who are kind of newer to the debating, anime debating, is like, you really need to set up your frame of reference. Like, people that come in with, like, zero frame of reference, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, pointing out the frame of reference, like, yo, I'm putting respect on nostalgia, you know? And I'm, like, basically that same thing, except adding it to other things, like, you know, like how we talked about like tuning and stuff like that. Like we were talking about, or again, we were talking about a very specific time period. Um, you know, some people like uh, Western characters, you need to put specific constraints on what it is they doing. Are we talking about right. all dumbass iterations of, of Superman? Or are we talking exactly. about current iteration of Superman? Are we talking about 
a Dragon Ball GT Goku or Super Goku, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like there are niggas that'll just take the whole, just every part of it and just like not not be realistic about like, you know, not every part of these fictional worlds can collide. You know what I mean? All right. Like, you know, and the motherfucker's like, oh, you can't hit a nigga because they don't know how to use Nin. Oh, come on, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> right, like you understand what we're trying to debate yeah. here, bro. Goku like, can't like beat that nigga. He ain't super... got nothing. Right. <laughs> Dumb as shit ever. Mm. Yeah. Any other closing comments on the toxic fan bases? I will just say, like you know, support your fandoms. I get it. Like I, I was, I was caping for for JoJo's, of course, but. I'm not opposed to hearing the counter arguments. Like I'm open to what player if I had to say about the shitty strats. And I just think everybody else should do the same with their own fandoms. Like it's healthy, bro. Like you have to be willing to let niggas critique your fandom. Cause that, that should be bothering me about the Naruto fans too. And uh, the OG, I'll just call them the OG fans. Anybody that's a fan of one of like the big three shonens, no matter what you say to them, it's like, you can't call, you can't admit that's my last point. The fact that the author can never be wrong or never make a mistake. And One Piece mm-hmm. fans love to use this. No matter how much you dislike um, the way the story's told or you try to critique how it's told, a One Piece fanboy always has a counter argument to say that you somehow don't understand it. But it could just be bad. <laughs> they could just be shitty at writing that one specific piece. And I felt like the uh, the community loves to do that for their various series. There's those subset of Naruto fans who will not allow you to say that certain pieces of the story were trash or that Sasuke wasn't a great character in Shippuden. They just want to argue that you just didn't understand something, which is not the case. Certain things can be objectively bad. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, like niggas will refuse to believe Itachi was a shitty spy. And I'm like, don't get me wrong, he was an awesome character. We love it, but it's kind of fucking stupid what he was doing. <laughs> like we can we be objective about that as adults now who could probably concoct a better scheme with his set of powers? Facts. Like, how the fuck are you to spy and they have no info on this group at all? Mm-hmm. This nigga was no, I ain't gonna get into it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro, his crows wasn't making it to the league. <laughs> right? Motherfuckers must have been intercepting his down. messages. <laughs> or Donzo was like, no, we don't trust them niggas, bro. Burnt his shit up. Yeah, I'm like, bro, oh. <laughs> oh. I hate it. All right. I'll close this out, um, and we can move on to make a highlight, starting with some put some respect on anything we want to highlight this month. I think all I'll put out is, uh, good job to got a high school of closing it with some action. Once again, story pacing horrible, but hey, you gave me what I needed at the end. Even though I felt like Jen's wish was a little dumb, um, <laughs> I'll put it that way. And uh, I mean, they were very petty in it, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. And then Bakugo, good job putting in work and being a Krillin for this uh, chapter of My Hero Academia. <laughs> That'd be my shit. Oh, and then also one thing, which I haven't started watching yet, but I'm tired of seeing the the memes of it from tick on TikTok that I'm going to start watching it is Nietzsche Rijo, I believe it's called. Uh, there's just like this keep this meme that keeps going around this girl with blue hair, like flipping a goat over. There's also like an old man that suplexes this deer. And then she like, I don't know, does this weird ass flip on somebody. I don't know. The action looked dope as fuck. So I'm going to watch it, but I'm pretty sure it's like Slice of Life, some other type of genre that I'm not used to. So mm-hmm. we'll see how this roller coaster ride goes. But I'll put some respect on them for that. That's like a telltale sign whenever they don't uh, have an English translated name. That mm-hmm. shit probably not shown in. Yep. <laughs> well, um, I want to put respect oh. on Black Clover. Um, mm-hmm. I, I've been very interested in the story uh, through the manga. This past month was kind of lit. I uh, want to put some respect on um, what you call it. Um, damn, I can't. Uh, how to or should I uh, pick up a girl in dungeon or something like that? The name long, I don't remember it, but uh, it's a pretty good show. Uh, I suggest watching it unless you get like cringed out by like uh, 
itchy, itchy stuff, then maybe you shouldn't. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um, gotta give some big ups again to Mashley. I mean, um, Magic and Muscles. Like, I mean, again, like if you want something to read and laugh about, like that, you don't gotta look no further. Like, you will get laughs from reading this ish because it is ridiculous, and it's pleasing me every single chapter. So, definitely big ups for keeping it light and keeping it goofy that I'm liking at least from it. Um, Who's that? Um, Mashley, Magic and Muscles, uh, manga mm-hmm. on chapter. It's still fresh. Uh, I think it's like early 30s. 30 30 right? something. Yeah, yeah, it's in 34, I believe the most recent one is. I'm like, he be that. going crazy, Jugger. He be reading everything. No, I mean, like, MGG is the one who got me on this one, but I mean, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's funny. Like, like, the best way oh, to summarize it is that imagine one punch man in a world of magic. Yep. That, that, that's what it is. Asta meets uh, or Black Clover meets One Punch Man. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But I mean, it's just it's just funny. Like he's just trying to do ish, and he's got like you know that blank, almost like One Punch Man face at times, and he's just like tr- just going. Yeah, through the artwork kind of reminds me of One Punch Man. Look, from what it looks like. It's, yeah. it's it's funny as fuck. Um, so definitely big ups to that. Uh. Just the this, in all honesty, is more not a big ups, but more just the what the f is going on with Chainsaw Man? Because these last few chapters have just been that's big facts. I mean, it's it's just wild. Like like you like you're gonna just be shook in the sense of like I don't even know if you're gonna un- understand what you're feeling because I definitely don't. Nope, um, I don't. Because <laughs> it is just sure kind of redonkulous right now. So I mean, I'm just going straight highlight it to say what's going on but as far as like is this good is this bad i, I don't i don't even know what, what to think about it anymore it's kind of like off the rails um, <coughs> so that's definitely an experience um for manga i guess i think that's pretty much it um everything else has been going along decently i suppose um oh snap um this is more <laughs> super late decent news hilarious um but the whole um oda uh, taking a hiatus from um, not feeling too good. So uh, definitely want to give him a shout out and hope he uh, feels better because I'm going to be needing One Piece chapters sooner rather than later. Cause yeah. Please don't home. turn it to a Togashi. You better finish that shit. Yeah, not a thousand chapters in almost. Yeah, don't do that. So, yeah. So my uh, Mine for the month is Oda because they say he's feeling better. So yeah, uh, that answers your question, I guess. Well, okay. There you go. That's good. Um, but yeah, so I mean, One Piece has definitely been hot these last few chapters. It's definitely been interesting. So uh, I'm liking the trend. Oh, word! I would disagree, but <laughs> we can Ooh. unpack that later. <laughs> we can unpack that at a different time. Uh, any other mega highlights or put some respect on for this month? Only thing is, I see um, uh, Demon Slayer put out a random ass chapter. Yep. I so I didn't promise read everything. Oh, I, I forgot read, to but... shout those out. I read both of those. Uh, Demon Slayer's thing was just adding more uh, sauce. Basically, it gives you the Flame Pillars uh, sad story that you might not have gotten while he was there. So, like, his demon, his, I don't know, first, I guess, before he became a pillar and how mm-hmm. one of his friends died. It wasn't, it didn't add any extra sauce to me. It was pretty meh. Um, didn't change how I felt about the ending either. Promise Neverland did the same thing. They tried to almost insinuate that the whole thing was started by Ray with this one shot that they did because they basically showed um, the button. Ray knew yeah, Ray knew about it, obviously, but we already knew he knew about it. But basically, he triggered the Connie bear situation. Um, he was the one responsible for them finding the bear um, and trying to deliver it to her, whatever the fuck that means. So um, it also didn't change how I feel about Promise Neverland. <laughs> it may have put an extra two points on my respect for Ray, uh, but that's about it. So both of those I, one shots honestly were a waste. They feel like money grabs to me. I don't. I don't even see why they wrote those chapters. 
No, I thought the same. I mean, I, I don't read Demon Slayer, but regarding Promise Neverland, I mean, low key, they did already mention it. Not sure how how hardcore they highlighted it from the get go, yeah. but like when they uh, revealed Ray was um the traitor to Mama, they did say that's like, but we know that you about us because you're probably the one um who like you know gave Emma the bear, like showed that the uh, bear or bunny um was still here. So I mean, we already did know that. And this oh. chapter was just pretty much, I guess, saying, like, to give you that one shot into his it's point true. of view for it. But, I mean, again, I, I just found it kind of pointless. So, Thanks. so yeah, I hope they close that out for real. I hope we don't get no more one shots from them. Y'all y'all did what y'all did. So, just let it go. <laughs> mm -hmm. let, it, let it go. You chose not to continue it. So, it's on y'all. Um, anything else? Uh, I just to, I mean, I'm gonna talk about it in the MVPs and Goofies, but yeah, I mean, shout out to Black Clover and uh, and Noct for just popping up and saying, fuck y'all. Um, and <laughs> that's a perfect transition, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we go straight to MVPs and Goofies. My MVP goes to Noct from Black Clover, he literally pulled up in this most recent chapter to the Black, <laughs> Black Bulls hideout. For no reason <laughs> whatsoever, other than to flame each and every member and say, they're like, you're our vice captain. He's like, yeah, I don't know why the fuck I'm your vice captain. I don't fuck with any of you, which also makes me wonder why he is their vice captain if he doesn't fuck with anybody. Uh, uh, maybe nobody wanted his ass because of the whole demon look, power he, thing. He said, um, he said it's more freedom. Oh, Sure. I still think if you hate them motherfuckers, I wouldn't do it. But <laughs> uh yeah, but either way, he flamed each and every uh notable member, except I think Charmy didn't get no smoke. Um, but yeah, pretty much everyone else did. <laughs> oh, and Noel didn't get no smoke either, I don't think. So and it's he came off as kind of like royalty respect. But they not there. No, no but he flamed I mean, niggas that Magna wasn't was there. Zora he flamed Magna. Magna ass too. Yeah, Magna and Zora wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> And he flamed new members. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Yeah, he, everyone got the smoke besides them for some reason. So outside of that, um, yeah, I just thought that was funny. This nigga just pulled up and said, fuck y'all. Uh, Goofy has to go to Tomura because I felt like you you gave us that hype. You made us put for y'all who had oh, the chapter oh. in your ears. Huh? No, I'm covering my ears. Go ahead. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, so, yes, yeah, so for all that shit that Tomura just did, and put in uh, all for one, still ended up taking sort of control of the body. It still seems like there's a slight fight there, but regardless, I feel like it kind of undermined all the work that Tomura quote unquote put in. Um, and I mean, all for one could just take over. And it literally took five seconds of all for one stepping in to complete a plan that Tomura basically was like De Deku punched multiple times. And it's just now that he was able to do this, I, I was a little bit confused. So I'm just giving him a goofy for that. Yeah. Um, I um, I think I want to jump in right here because yeah. literally my goofy MVP, I wasn't even looking at yours, are the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's the same thing. So I'm going to start with MVP, bro. Because his goofy was Tomora. My MVP all for one. <laughs> Because, yo, like, that nigga was with Tomura was like, no, I can do it on my own. That nigga was like, shut up, bro. You needed right? me. Like, that's a, you needed me, and that's a fact. <laughs> yo, I love it. I love it. He came in and handled the situation instantly. Um, And then my goofy is Black Bulls because, like, they really the hardest niggas out there. Like, gosh, like. You got all these hard ass niggas and some nigga you don't know walked into your house to flame you. He didn't come there for nothing else. That nigga <laughs> came there like you niggas is ass and then left. Bro, like all them niggas, like all we've been seeing this whole time is how rough and tumble these niggas are. And y'all just let that happen. No nigga up the spell. No nigga did nothing, bro. They sat there. I was like for that, bro, Black Bulls, y'all goofy. That shows me that y'all niggas, y'all soft, bro. How y'all let that nigga do that to you in your house? It's his house too, technically. Right. Well, oh, that's the thing, though. Know. It's that's more like, his house than all these other niggas, low key. Imagine, imagine if a nigga got on the podcast and was like, "Bro, I'm the founder, little bitch," and he just started going in on everybody here. We just sat there like, "Huh?" I'm <laughs> like, "What?" <laughs> nigga, like, Bro, I don't give a fuck who you are. 
Hug up and deleted the chat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it deleted the recording too. Just Dude. like dip. Yo. He spit on them, bro. Like, I feel like I thought the nobles were horrible, but that thing that he did, I was like, yo, this is worse than the shit that I've heard Nazel spit. All that royal, you know, you ain't shit spewing nonsense. Knox blew those motherfuckers out the water with that shit. I was like, damn, bro. Anybody could get it in construction. That nigga was the epitome, like the manifestation of that meme, where it's like, it smells like bitch in here. For real. <laughs> I feel like he actually pulled up to Black Bull's hideout with an AK and just lit everyone up. Because they didn't know what the fuck to say. And it was like, even us as the reader, it was like, and I fuck with these niggas, but he's right. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is, if anybody else would, have, if Nozell himself came in there like y'all niggas garbage, they would have they would start busting at this nigga. Like it would have yeah. been a fight. Oh, like he really had them in their place. Like yo, this nigga spitting facts. <laughs> they were just shocked, bro. Flabbergasted. I feel like he could have started flaming this nigga's sister, low key, and and uh, what's his face when it got up? Your mm-hmm. sister's stronger than you, and that bitch stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and he would have just sat there looking dumb. Yeah. That's Crazy. cool. Who? Who got who got the other ones? Deuce and uh and Jug, we waiting on y'all. Um I'm still trying to think of a good MVP, but uh for the moment I'm definitely gotta give Goofy to uh Huey in, from the boys. Uh for <laughs> the reasons we talked about earlier. I mean the whole the whole rescue plan should have just never been implemented. Just period. Oh, I'll just leave it like that. And then y'all can refer to what we talked about earlier. Um, low key, I mean, I kind of got a low key, another slight goofy um, Machina from FN Chainsaw Man. I mean, homegirl, like at the last chapter, rolled up, which seemed like a squad that was going to at least give Chainsaw Man a bit of work. You know, like we were about <laughs> no. to see a fight. We did not. <laughs> but that shit was her commentary at the end was funny as hell. So. Oh no, that was hilarious. But that's also another reason why I gotta put it for goofy. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like whoop, that didn't work. Oh, uh, I guess we're all dead then. <laughs> just like really. I mean, but that's what she said she was gonna do. She said, fuck it, I'm just gonna try it out. But the, but that's just the thing though. Like she pretty much already like I at least I personally thought she already had that feel like two chapters back. Like before yeah. they did the whole restaurant chapters, which is a whole nother thing. Um, that was ridiculous. But I mean, like it pretty much said that like she was giving her life to the Chainsaw Man in the first place. So her to roll up with like these guys, I was like, oh, okay. So she still got a bit of life left. And it's just like, no, it wasn't truly a try. It was just like, you know what? Y'all can go ahead and die by Chainsaw Man too. Because that's what it really was. But in any case, I, I still got to put like some slight goofy for that. Um, fuck. As far as as far as MVP, like, uh, I mean, I think I might have to just give it to Mash again. Um, you know what? You know what? Just cause I'm gonna give it to Kugisaki from uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, because um, based on the last two chapters, I was actually um, surprisingly impressed. Um, based on like how well her ability was um jockeying. On um, what's his face? I can't think of his name, but um, buddy um, Itadori was um going up against and like create the shadow clone practically, because I honestly just thought she was gonna get waxed, but the fact that she was actually able to turn around and like cause him to do a contingency plan, I was definitely impressed, because uh, we haven't been seeing that many you know big highlights or any any noise from her at all. So good job to show out. I mean, it looks like she's about to get dropped, unfortunately, but she at least got a quick highlight beforehand. Who's your last one? Yeah, I don't really have any recent, um, any recent MVPs or anything. Uh, when was the last MVP we did? That I did at least. I feel it's been months, right? Uh, it's been a month. Probably. Were you on? Oh no, you missed the last one, so I don't know. We had to pull back like three, four episodes. Mm. <clears throat> and I don't even know if it was documented. Nope, I don't see one in episode forty-one. I'll check forty in July. 
Akira Toriyama got a goofy from you. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> that was on July 12th. <laughs> uh, and then the last MVP in June 14th, you gave it to all streaming services. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> was it? <laughs> was it? Yeah, they're getting me through this. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't have um I actually been reading books. So I don't even have like no So why don't you put respect on some books? Like <laughs> yeah, let's okay it. shit. Um so after you know, after Avatar got added to Netflix, after like and then Legend of Korra got added to I re- we watched all the Avatar and then I just started Googling shit to find more information about Avatar stuff. And I found out there are these two books online about these two um, novels about Avatar Kiyoshi, pretty much. Um, that bitch and crazy. I would defi- huh? I said that bitch crazy. Yeah, like and they, I would actually give them my MVP. It's a lot more graphic than the anim- than the, the cartoon. Also, what was like, this? It's a it's a book about Avatar Kiyoshi about how she. Got oh, started. I heard she was cold as fuck. I've been here seeing some TikToks yeah. about her. Yeah, I mean, she wasn't no, like a good bender, but she was like ruthless. She was killing niggas. Yeah, she was murdering like, niggas for sure. Yeah, I mean, towards the end, at the end, like at the last fight, it was just one. Oh, if y'all don't care, but I don't care. Um, this nigga was like bodying her and her, her team. This one nigga, he he was because he was just cold with the shit. He's an earth bender, but he walked up to her and then she just touched him and like froze all his blood immediately. So she was, <laughs> what? Yeah, she just froze all the blood in his body. Was so she, she like was seven okay. feet tall too? Yeah, she's tall as shit. It's funny. Yeah, that's, that's that shit. Um, bro, I, I, she must have been so calm in those spirit chats, bro. Because if she was that, <laughs> holy crap! Hey, imagine, imagine being that type of nigga, and then you get some nigga like, should should yeah. I kill the fire lord yeah. in this nigga? Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, Ang, don't call my motherfucking phone. <laughs> don't, don't hit my line no more, I'm nigga. Done, nigga. Yes, fine. kill him. Goofy. <laughs> no, I mean, that's really how he is. Froze all the... Bl- Damn. I didn't even know y'all avatars could do that. That's crazy. Oh my- Ozai is so lucky. I'd be praying if I was Ozai. Like, thank God Aang right. showed the fuck up. Because if he got Kiyoshi, bro, he wouldn't have made... She would have pulled up to the, the spot, bro. Hey, hey we not waiting for the eclipse. Off. I'm at your house, nigga. You got lucky. <laughs> no, that's true. She, she actually, and, uh, like, she's rushing the fights and just, just like start throwing hands with niggas. Yeah, Aang and Roku were soft, bro. Kiyoshi and, and Korra would have banged that nigga Ozai, bro. No words, nigga. I pulled up to your house, nigga. But What's there, up? what what Roku and Aang were to Kiyoshi was the apology to her. It was like we know y'all had a pretty violent <laughs> avatar before, <laughs> so bad. we give you these two. You know what I'm saying? To tell you, we not all bad, <laughs> but you see, Korra tried to bring that shit back. But she couldn't execute it all the way. <laughs> See, they, they, I mean, it's difficult. Um, the Avatar before, like, um, before Kiyoshi, they said he, they, they be like he was shitty anyway. He was like killing spirits. Like hated him. But yeah. Um, but Avatar Kiyoshi lived for like three hundred years, bro. Oh wow, he was. Oh, the two hundred thirty years. So she just cold off that shit alone. Wow. The That's- other thing that I, uh, I remember seeing on TikTok about it since we in the Avatar realm. Um, was the the look of the avatars that they all actually look like the um the love interest of the previous avatar matching some type of like type of karmic thing. But if mm. you notice, Kora looks like Katara. Aang actually looks like Avatar Roku's wife, and I guess looks Roku like, looks like uh, Kiyoshi's love interest. So someone po- oh, pointed that out she, on TikTok with the who pictures. Who looks like Kiyoshi's everything. love interest? I don't know, but someone po- pointed it out with the pictures and everything, and it was. It was accurate. Like the face designs were there. So you said the avatar like, looks like the previous avatar's love interest. The there's like some like... karmic thing or whatever where it was yeah. like your reincarnation looks like the person you loved the most in the previous life. So if you look at technically Korra, Aang's reincarnation looks like Katara. And no, Kyoshi was Roku's gay. Roku's incarnation looks like Roku's wife. Kyoshi was gay. So, so Roku can't like... look alike. Yeah, Aang looks like Roshu's wife. Like but they were like some different, like oh, actually, actually, no, you're right, you're right, because her the girl, the girl she liked was in the Fire Nation. So yeah, shit. Hey, all I gotta say is that the next Avatar gonna be a bad bitch. I don't know what uh, Asami is. Facts. But the next Avatar gonna be bad. 
<laughs> no, nigga, they gonna they gonna make it a nigga, a pretty ass nigga. Yeah. I'm like, bro, why this nigga this thick? <laughs> <laughs> Did they confirm they're making another one? Or are I you don't just know. saying? I, I mean, they, they really know. should. Like, why I think they are. Right? Because you know they like they got off. They're not on the Netflix show anymore. And I they put a statement out saying they're working towards more content. So I don't know if that means older shit like. I don't Shit, think even if it was a manga, I fuck with it. They just need like uh I'm waiting for them to reach the modern day. You feel me? Mm. I like the steampunk thing was nice, but I'm definitely interested to see it's a it's a lot of world building there. Like it, so, it's interesting to see the growth of the world with the avatar. The reason I, mean, I don't that's, think that's why they I will mm-hmm. um is because if you think about like the avatar world, it's one hundred percent reflective of uh east asian um history and culture and i'm like now we live in a world where you know china is big in the market and so if you're making things that aren't like you know favorable that will work there or that are (laughs) offensive there you might low-key like just fuck up your 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 money so i'm Mm -hmm. like "Mm, i don't know because because avatar if you look at it like the earth kingdom Definitely represent China, and they sure. often represent in a negative light. So I'm like, in today's economy, that's the type of shit that'll get Netflix fucking banned in China and lose like half his revenue. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, his bro. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Do it." Fuck that. Hey, a South Park wasn't scared. <laughs> yeah, them whole oh, facts. Them niggas don't give a fuck. I watched their old pandemic special too. That was wild. That nigga don't give a fuck. That was wild. Bro. I gotta watch that shit. Yo, they don't give a fuck, yeah. bro. Is it on Hulu? Hulu? Yeah. That's no, it out. probably is now, maybe. But I was watching on YouTube TV. It's mm-hmm. it's on it's on multiple times now on it Comedy is, Central. It's it you probably if you got the channel. Damn. Oh wow. Yeah, it's that was different it. things brackets, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Do you have a goofy? <laughs> Any nigga that pay for uh, YouTube goofy, bro? I didn't pay for it. That's why. That shit is oh. taxing. <laughs> I had that free trial. They tried to get me. Almost forgot. <laughs> Almost forgot to cancel my car the last day. I did. So. Oh no! They didn't get me. I'm good. I'm mm. not paying for it. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, shoot. Low key. Uh, I'm going to put some respect on. Uh, I mean, I forgot to add this too. I should have. Because I did experience this month. And since we're on the outside of the blurred spectrum, Antebellum. I rented that movie. I'm not going to advise everyone to go and rent it. But when it drops in, in the free ish form, uh, definitely watch that shit. I enjoyed the twist in that movie. Definitely gives you those get out vibes. It was a good, it was a good movie. I enjoyed you know what's it. Crazy? I'm on IG and I literally like just before you said that saw like an ad for Antebellum. No <laughs> you think it's no? You think it's no? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was dope this month. Uh, and oh, also Lovecraft Country. I've been watching that too pretty consistently. It's a pretty good, calm HBO watch. It's not like the greatest thing you've ever seen, but I definitely love like the issues they're tackling with there as far as like the black issues i guess as a whole like even with the time period but also a lot of it relates to modern day i just i enjoy it and it's kind of like a whatever i guess you call it, it's not really sci-fi but like a supernatural fantasy type of show so it's, it's dope yeah it's a, it's a good watch like you said it's not it's not like um a hbo a premiere hbo show like uh that'll bring hbo new people i feel like yeah but. also shout out to atticus for Getting casted as whatever the fuck, King the Conqueror, mm-hmm. uh, in whatever Marvel movie he's supposed to be in, but oh, I think I didn't expect that. And then um Buddy's gonna be um uh Hawkman too, right? Oh, I forgot his name, but I like the actor. Um damn, who just got casted? I'm about to look it up right now. Oh, um, Aldis Hodge in um, DC's Black Adam. He's going to be a uh, Hawkman. Oh, okay. I don't know him. What, what was he in, notably? 
looking up his IMDb. Oh, okay, I see his face. I see his face. I definitely know this guy. I've seen him in things, but I don't. I can't give you a particular off the top of my head. I no, see him. Uh, let's see. He was in one of the Die Hards, uh, straight out of Compton. Um, let's see what else. He oh, he solidified. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he solidified. He was in straight out of Compton. He good. All right, then let's just stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got a goofy this month, uh, Deuce, or no? No, I got a goofy. All right. Nobody in the of. Kiyoshi's timeline you think is goofy? Was Cheetah Conqueror as, as hyped as cold as they hyped him up to be? Um, no, they didn't get to that part. Oh, we ain't got to him yet? No. Nah. All right. I mean, there's some goofy people in there for sure, but. That's funny, though, because in Aang, the way it was explained was like <laughs> it was an accidental death. But when you say she's on site with niggas, it's kind of like <laughs> she kind of wished she really killed that nigga. She no, separated that- the thing and then wiggled her chin and that shit fell. Hey, because like it, when Aang like, brought her up, she even said, like, I killed him. Don't get it twisted, Aang. Like, if he fell or not, if he accidentally fell or not, I definitely would have smoked that nigga. This is, <laughs> that's pretty much what she said. She said, like, I would have killed that nigga. So, and she would. <laughs> Well, all right, I guess we will close it out here. Uh, catch y'all on the next episode. See you. Bye. Peace. All right, until next time. <laughs>